it started like this. And, and after all, being fair is the greatest gift of all. Give me a break, Craig. Good evening, and welcome to the first edition of Quintessential Covina. And ended like this. Guess all that's left is to, again, say thanks to everyone. Thanks to Continental. And thanks to everybody who worked on the show and watched and all that stuff. Thank you, Covina, for making this possible. And in between, well, in between, a lot happened, and it's a lot easier to show you than to explain. So here's just a sample. We had the unusual... Some people think I'm a female impersonator, but I'm not. You did. <laughs> what? You asked me out. I just got to tell the truth. Brutus Chieftain, leader of Poets in Distress, read some of his own poetry and answered callers' questions. Nuns in uniforms get free donuts. Cops, yes, but now nuns don't. This is not right. A society palooka against itself cannot stand. There's a Foster's Donut Shop a block away from my trailer on Alasta Avenue. The Glendora cops cruise five miles up Alasta and then back, looking for drunk drivers and free glaze. We just thought you'd like to see this. I was even notified by my wife that we were about to have a baby. What happened? Ooh, what happened? Did we lose him? Hello. Did it come Hello, Marty. Yeah. This is your wife. Are you kidding? No. You better come home. Are you kidding? No, I'm not kidding. Oh. You better come home right away. Okay. Okay. Uh, folks, uh, I can't believe it. <laughs> that was a legitimate call from my wife. I'm going to the hospital. Mike, now. sorry. <laughs> um, See ya. Yeah, I'm coming. We met some famous musicians along the way, like... Joni Mitchell. At the end, when the woman passes the peace pipe to me, mm -hmm. I was filming th that segment. Oh. So th I mistimed in a way with her because she passed the pipe to me and I didn't know whether I was confused. Should I put down my camera and accept it? Mm -hmm. And you'll see an expression on her face. She did it of her own volition, but when I hesitated, she looked over to a higher up, one of the chiefs. To, to see, see if okay. it was all right to, uh -huh. to be doing this with me, I think. And there's a moment <laughs> where her expression uh, changes. Hesitation. Or... And those wacky B-52s. One night we were drinking beer and listening to pygmy music, and the cows <laughs> circled us completely. They must have thought it was a feeding tray. And they all started going like that. <laughs> all in a perfect rhythm to the music. And it was just cosmic. <laughs> Other personalities included... Edward Moses, and you're watching Quintessential Covina. Hi, I'm Danielle Von Zernick. I play Don and La Bamba, and whenever I'm in Covina, I watch Quintessential Covina on Community Channel 33 every Saturday at 10 p.m. Hey, this is Vicki Peterson of the Bengals, and every time I'm in Covina, I watch Quintessential Covina on Community Channel 33 every Saturday at 10 p.m., and that is the truth. Hi, I'm Chevy Checker. Whenever I'm in Covina, I watch Quintessential Quivina on Community Channel 33 every Saturday night at 10 p.m. And you better be there, too. Hello, Covina. I'm David Dreyer, your representative in Congress. Whenever I've suffered through a very rough legislative schedule, I just sit down and kick my feet up and watch Quintessential Covina. It ought to be a law. Be careful, you're up here with three Democrats. Hello, I'm Russell Mayall from Sparks. And I'm Ron Mayall from Sparks. And you know, every time we are in Covina, we watch Quintessential Covina. And Swear to God. Quintessential Covina. Hi, that's General Chuck Yeager. You're watching Quintessential Covina. Hi, I'm Jacqueline Zeman. And whenever I'm in Covina, I watch Quintessential Covina on Community Channel 33. Every St. Patrick's Day, we went to McMurphy's. And sometimes we even got serious. People who would die unnecessarily don't have to anymore. 
And the reason they don't have to is because of something you talked about earlier, marrow transplantation. And it's really a marvelous new miracle of med medical technology. Uh, about 30 years ago, the first uh, marrow transplant was done, but it took years and really decades to get the uh, system perfected and to have the right medical care, drugs, technology, et cetera, so that it really works. So in the last few years, people who would otherwise have died of leukemia, as you mentioned, and other serious blood disorders don't have to. And uh, the system is in place. The one thing it's lacking are marrow donors. Tonight's appearance by Don Fletcher is not the first time we had a Miss Covina on the show. Our first show included Lori Brandt, Miss Covina, 1988. But uh, now, Lori, is there anything else you would like to add? We've we got to get to the news segment before too long, but... That's sorry. right. You've probably seen quite enough of me at this no, point. Oh, no, no, they've no. seen quite enough of us. But That's I'm probably sure. true also. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Oh. Oh. Yeah, you're welcome back. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, well, I think we have an opening in 1992. Uh, for, no. <laughs> Anything you would like No, seriously, to we can take it. <laughs> you want to take a drink in front of us? Rude. I'm sorry. <clears throat> no, actually. She, she did it. But I Miss would... Covina can do it. I can do it. That's right. And after all, this is quintessential Covina. Is all the essence of Covina. Of all elements. Thank you for your support. Yes, you're welcome. And 1989's Kimberly Grafe. Okay, uh, now we want to do something. Uh, Give us a call Kim roll. Kimberly again. and Marty are dying to embarrass me. So, <laughs> real quick, um, we just want to Somebody do has to follow here. Robert, you might want to get ready here to, to move the camera a little bit because we're going to. Uh, we're out of the picture now. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> 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 oh, what a big woman. Okay, yeah, she's. she's uh, um, she was no put on this earth to make sure my hairline looks good. Um, <laughs> and the second time we've done that today. Yeah, that's okay. Well, that's okay. Yeah, it's okay. Go ahead. <laughs> but he's so cute. Oh, oh gosh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's okay. Go ahead. <laughs> and there was always plenty of bad acting. Okay, but can you just give me a moment to put my crown on? Yeah, fine. Now, now, calm down. It, it, it's here somewhere. We'll find it. Don't worry. Everything's going to be okay. We'll, we'll find it. It's got to be around here somewhere. Look around. Well, that's just a small sample of the 64 shows that seem to pass through our fingers like sand. This and much more created the charm and the harm that was quintessential Covina. <laughs> And now, from the town that's the pride of the San Gabriel Valley, it's the reunion edition of Quintessential Covina! Oh! Hey. With your host, Dave Cluck and Marty Guests. Tonight, guests, <laughs> Covina Mayor Christopher Lancaster and Covina, Miss Covina, 1990, Don Fletcher. Also, a special edition of the Freeman Weiner Report. Don't miss Covina Newsstand with Margaret Wolfe. 
and also returning are Jeff Plummer and Wayne Sakamoto with Jeff's Note. And in the background is the exclusive Blind Dog Band. And me, I'm your very bright announcer, Rob Van Reel. Please, don't adjust your sets. And now we'll get ready, because we don't want to do this again. Here they are, the hosts of Quintessential Covina, Dave and Marty. Oh. I'm just waiting for the band to run. That's out. great. That's great. <laughs> <laughs> no! All right. Thank you, Rob and Blind Dog and everybody. First off, hello, Covina. Hi, Covina. Um, welcome to our reunion show. Uh, gee, it's been a long year. A lot has happened, and we'll get you up to date. But first, I have a special request. If anybody out there knows either Don Fletcher or Chris Lancaster, <laughs> please give them a call and tell them to come to the studio. Because they're supposed to be on this show, and they're not here right now. So I'm that's, sure it's they're important. They're probably, I'm, they're probably on their way. But Randy Gordon, if you're out there, uh, give Donna a call. She, yeah, give Donna a call. She's got to be on in about 40 minutes, probably. Yeah, we have a little bit of time. We have a lot to do. Well, actually, I mean, as, you know, that uh, epic we saw at the beginning of the show wasn't too bad. Yeah. As well. <laughs> I mean, uh, Hello. Like four or five. Oh, we have, we have, we have a here. guest. Somebody's knocking What's on this? the door. Um, oh, oh it's Xavier. God. I heard. I heard. <laughs> Uh, this is Xavier Hermosillo. Oh, How are you? Yeah, how are you? Nice to see you. Um, um, I think they the said they had one ready for me. <laughs> Did they? <laughs> sure. Ex excuse me, I, I must look I for a microphone. Show my legs off to Covina. Oh, well, I'll, I'll, You're I'll gonna have to get up. They, they look for a microphone here. <laughs> well, I'm not uh, sure where the uh, other mic is. Oh, there it is. Okay. There's one over there. You, can uh, you? Where is it? <laughs> there's no clip on it. <laughs> excuse us, Covina. You can hold it. Well, you know, this is. So, so Xavier. This is kind of an unusual night, you know. He's got a Raiders so, shirt on. <laughs> so what's so what's the deal, uh, Xavier? Get me on my shoes. Look at my shoes. Can you get my shoes? Can you get my shoes? Can you? I got, I got red logos on my shoes. So, and, uh, so what happened? Well, you still got quarries over there and stuff. <laughs> well, I'm no longer in Irwindale. Yeah, I know. Uh, I, I heard that you guys were doing your reunion show, your last show. Mm -hmm. and, and I just, yeah, yeah. yeah. Nice. That was a good you guys, thank you, Tom Nelson. You guys are making it bigger. In the big time, on your way out. Then you can your <laughs> Story of our lives. <laughs> you know. Story of our lives. But I uh, went to the Raider game today, and they won 16 to 14. Oh. And uh, you know, we partied afterwards, and uh, I, I just got home, and I uh, was running some errands, and then I remembered about you guys, and I thought I'd just come by and say how much fun it was to be on here twice. Like three and, times uh, now. Yeah, three times now, <laughs> and to have worked with you at Covina Park when President Bush, uh, you know, was here. Then yeah. Vice President. Uh, then Vice President Bush. Two days later. We, we knew him then, huh? Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Man, way back. Knew him when? We knew way back. Him. We knew him. Yeah, I knew Before him. I made the big time. Exactly. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. And so uh, I just kind of popped in, and then I, I heard you panting and saying, you know, where's uh, Miss Cutie and uh, Mr. Politics? And uh, <laughs> Oh, man. <laughs> you, you know, we can say this. It's a nice show. Views and opinions expressed by guests on our show are not necessarily Dave. What? Mine. What are they going to do? Cancel you? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, that's... That's, uh, by the way, hi, Skip, if you're watching. Hey, Mr. Bellier. So uh, they said, hey, why don't you go in there and surprise him? And I, and I said, well, give me a chance to personally say, you know, uh, it was really fun. I, you know, I, as you guys know, I've been around the country a lot, and I've seen a lot of uh, shows in hick places, you know, little shows. But to see... I.E. I.E. Yeah. <laughs> Twilight. Well, like, like Snow Pony, right? Miles City, Montana, and uh, Lovington, New Mexico. I mean, really holes. You've been on Carson. <laughs> uh, yeah, I've been on Johnny Carson. I've been here, but see, I've, I've only been on Johnny Carson once. I've been here not three times. Yeah, exactly. You know? exactly. And so this 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 show is like nothing I've ever seen. And uh, of course, I didn't. I don't live in Covina, so I never saw it. Uh, <laughs> okay. I live in West Covina, and I was exactly. really looking forward to seeing you guys on cable in West Covina. And uh, you know, I mean, like it didn't happen. Yeah, it just, happened. we had just started to <clears throat> arrange that when everything just sort of went into the toilet. Well, what a shame, huh? Yeah. What a shame. It's, too bad. it's been a year. But you know, you guys. Uh, you know, you put in so much effort, and you know, you really care about Covina, and you really care about your community, and you know, you did a lot, and uh, Gosh. for no pay, and you know, lousy food out in the hallway, and no, 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 just kidding. Great food. I mean, hey, hey, guys, you know, who are girthy like you and I talking about lousy food? There is no such animal as <laughs> lousy food. Right? I didn't say lousy. <laughs> no, and I, I was just kidding. Okay. And, uh, yeah, I you can know, take a joke. You know what I remember? <laughs> I mean, you know, I remember the makeup person that you have out here. Puts on the makeup. Boy, she's lovely. Michelle. Michelle. Michelle, Michelle Miller. Michelle. I mean, I've had Thank makeup you, put on, you know, by, like, the pros, you know. 
mm -hmm. TV stations and stuff and networks and but I'll always remember Michelle. I don't remember the other people. That's good. I really don't, but I remember Michelle. Hey Xavier, look at the monitor. <coughs> <laughs> <laughs> don't look at the monitor. <coughs> Cute. Kind of catches your eye, doesn't it? Yeah, I know. It's like it's, it's not serving a purpose yeah. up there. I think Jake should get a shot of that. This is what they tell us to do, basically. Is, is if we if we look at the monitor too much, yeah, then our, our crack crew in there uh, puts a little page up That's cute. on the monitor and says, says, "Don't, don't look, at look at the monitor," which monitor. of course <coughs> makes us look at the monitor. Exactly. Reunion show, no axe to grind, just a point to make. Hey, then like that. the next thing. I like that. I like that. Yeah. yeah. So what you been up to? <laughs> well, no good. Uh, you know, when the Raider deal fell apart in Irwindale because of uh, internal Irwindale politics and uh, Al Davis's wanderlust. Uh, you know, I talked to him today. He still doesn't know where he wants to go. That's amazing. Uh, it's sad. Yeah. It's sad. Now it's back in L.A. Maybe or the Coliseum. <coughs> yeah, is that I think he's going to stay in the Coliseum, but you know, it's just uh, it's really hard to tell. Um, you know, we put a lot of effort. I mean, I put three years of my life into this thing, and uh, you know, it, it's too bad it didn't come together. Uh, um, we were at the game today, and one of my associates was saying to the people uh, at, at a low point in the game. Um, you know, we have to drive all the way out here to see this stuff. You know, I'd have rather been in Irwindale and people going, yeah, Irwindale, that would have been it. Yeah, I was nice. looking forward to the concerts myself. Hey, me too. <clears throat> but, um, I want to see Pink Floyd in, in, in uh, Irwindale. Yeah, well, <laughs> <laughs> you know, I don't know if they'd have let him into town. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, they w then they wouldn't have got my business. Yeah, that's right. It's too bad. It didn't happen. Uh, you know, uh, I, uh, I think part of, the, part of the blame lines, and I, I've said it before, with some of the surrounding communities, because everybody said, yeah, it'd be great. Not, not Covina, But course. nobody was willing to do anything to help out. Everybody expected everyone to carry the ball, and uh, it got to be too much, you know. No, no pun intended. <coughs> carry the ball, okay. What? Gotcha. Carry the ball. Oh, yeah, carry the ball. <laughs> I, thought, I thought you were saying no pun intended on too much. Uh, you know what? What? I think uh, we should have uh, Rob give our phone number out. Yes, we haven't. Uh, so we can get a call <coughs> in here. Well, people that might because want to call and Covenants are the, are the most important part of Quintessential Covina. And there you go, Rob. Thank you. You can give us a call here at QC at 967-7353. That's 967-7353. Give us a call oh, we got the old number, right man. now. Hey, old uh, RoboJack here hasn't changed much. Yeah, he's, he's, he's up his suit. Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, ra 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 yeah, he, he ran into uh, Don Johnson and he stole his clothes. <laughs> yeah, doesn't he know that Miami Vice is like out? Yeah. You know? That's your advice. I mean, I think I think the entire by my own me, my own me. Oh man, brawl breakout. I think Chris Wilson is dressed very nicely. Natalie, he is dressed Natalie. Wait a minute, wait a minute. God, I feel like I've taken drugs or something. Look at it. What is that? Uh oh. I hope somebody's calling to say they know we're on their way. Yeah. Hello. How do I turn? Hello. Hi. Who's this? This is Lou Brutico. Hey! How, how you guys doing tonight? Good, how's it going? Pretty good. All right. Just wanted to say I miss your guys' show. You guys should be on more frequently. <laughs> yeah. now, you mean more than once a year? Yeah, well, you know. <laughs> we miss it, too. Yeah, we, and, uh, we miss a lot of the viewers. Great uh, Twin Peaks theme at the beginning of the show. Did you like that? Oh, it was wonderful. Yeah, I know that we're going to be competing against Twin Peaks in about another, what, 40 <laughs> minutes or so. So, oh, let me give you a little more uh, slack. So slack. Right. And uh, we just wanted to give a little bit of twin peakness to the, to the show uh, in case we lose a few people. It, it was beautiful. Thank you. I also got to thank you for the plug, my uncle, uh, Rudy Brudico. Oh, he's uh, a good man. Yeah, he's head of Lifesavers. Nice plug there. Yeah. You bet. Appreciate it was, that. We enjoyed having him on. That was a great show. Yeah, it was. Well, what you guys keep the good work. Thanks. Well, thanks. You too. Hope, uh, <laughs> hopefully Miss Covina will show up. Uh, yeah, no kidding. <laughs> you guys take care. Okay. okay. Thanks a lot for calling. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Well, you know, the people at Covina are really going to miss uh, a lot. You, know, you guys were uh, a cultural experience. An institution? Is that what you're going to say? I don't know about an institution. Or, or, commit, or should be committed to you, one? You and See, I are big enough to be institutions, you know, uh, <laughs> but I don't know if you guys qualify as, Hello. as cultural institutions. Hold on, hold on, Xavier. Is somebody there? Yeah, it's me. Who? The mayor. Where are you? I'm at home watching you on television. Oh, that's real oh, nice. Got <laughs> <laughs> a late call uh, time. I can't count on those politicians, you know. Yeah. Well, listen, uh, did you want me to come down tonight? Yeah. Well, yeah. Uh, you're wearing the same thing you wore last year when I was on the show. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, so... This is a new shirt. Yeah, what's your point? <laughs> well, the point is I'm enjoying the show watching it here at home, and it's grateful to see uh, Mr. Himasilo there. Mabuhai. And uh, grateful to hear what's going on in your life, which uh, is nothing, right? 
So you right, can't, so right, you just uh, <laughs> quiet times. How's Molly made? <clears throat> uh, Molly made is now made with care. And uh, <laughs> doing very well, actually. Great. Nine one five six thousand. <laughs> <laughs> Another plug. Another shameless plug. <laughs> yes. Yeah, but Chris, uh, come on down. All right, I'll be down about oh, 10 minutes. That's Great. beautiful. Well, if you, you know, know how Holly to reach Don Fletcher, please give her a call. You can't and say that in Hollywood, be there in 10 minutes, you know, only in yeah, Covina. Really, only, only in Covina. Covina. Exactly. Yeah. Wow. And he's oh. taking the long way. I mean, I, I live in Hollywood now, and, and to get in Holly, anywhere in Hollywood about this time of night takes forever where I live. It's got to go through Hollywood Boulevard and just jams up, and everybody likes to sit there and drive. Why do you miles live in Hollywood? Covina I'm, wasn't I'm working out there now. Are you? Yeah. I'm so glad I, to hear that. I left here about a year ago and, and well, gained some employed. Exactly. Wow. They drive around and, they, and their girls are on the back of the motorcycles and uh, uh, in their cut-off jeans. And all the CD element on Hollywood Boulevard. And Absolutely. Are you part of that? Uh, <laughs> no, I don't mean the CD element. Not I tonight. Mean, I mean part of the Hollywood Boulevard scene. You no, know? not really. <coughs> no, nope, I'm always working. It seems like doing something, keeping busy. Do, do the people who, who have uh, watched Quintessential Covina for so long know what you're doing now? Uh, I don't know. If they read the trip. If, if yeah. they read the trip. Yeah. They kind of know. Well, yeah, they just no. know I left. That I, I, yeah, I, used, to, I used to be employed well, you here. moved up in the world. No. Well, no. and you're not going to tell him. He doesn't know that he has either. And you're not going to tell him. I don't know. Well, I work for a, for a film company. Oh, that's great. Yeah, commercials. We do commercials. Oh, really? Well, there's no film companies in Covina, so it's just... That's true. Company. That's true. There's a, quite a few in Hollywood, though. Uh, excuse me. <laughs> Hello, caller. Hello. Who's this? Uh, this is Nick. Hey, hey, Nick. Hey, I was uh, wondering if you guys are going to give away any tickets tonight. No, but we're going to give away T-shirts. Oh, okay. Uh, we got we got the special edition reunion uh, quintessential Covina shirts here. Ooh. It has the, uh, the, uh, the the beautiful logo on the front. You're covering your mic, Marty. Don't do that. Do you the surprise? beautiful logo on the, on the front, oh, yeah. and then on the back. Wow. It says reunion show. Hey, why did, you guys, why did you guys end up going off the air anyway? Well, uh, political reasons. Oh. Are uh, you guys going to have uh, Northview football on this year? Uh, you know. Steve, are you guys doing football this year? Okay, yes, that's, a, that's that was our director, Hal Gurney. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, thanks. Northview football, number one. Absolutely. All right, bye. <laughs> Go for it, yeah. Hey, you guys, uh, those are the only giveaways you have? You want, you Actually, um, you want this, is not a, this is not a giveaway. Raider tickets? Sure. Are you away some Raider tickets? Sure. Get people I, I have season seats on the 50-yard line, and I'll be glad. Wait a minute, wait, yeah. wait, wait, wait. We need wait, to wait, give yeah. away some tickets. We're going to take a break, okay? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, provided they get the tickets first. Wait, we're not on a delay, are we? Can to bleep that out? Uh, um, another thing I'd like to kind of plug tonight, um, these are the, the latest uh, Rage in T-shirts. It's the <laughs> Save the Medfly T-shirt that has been out. Uh, brought to you by uh, the, the, the name of the company is One Dime Productions, and uh, and the back it has the the Medfly tour, all the cities that the Medfly uh, spring has visited, and the ones that they're projected to visit in 1991. Uh, so uh, we're urging everybody no, to Kavina, to, to it's save the. Covina should be on there. It is, isn't it? It, it is right there. It's right there. Because they were okay. spraying. Yeah, they were spraying. There's they were spraying, man. There's the Medfly tour, 1990. Okay, and then 1991 down at the bottom there. Wow. But uh, if you'd like to get one of these shirts, they're going to be uh, definite collector's island, uh, items. It's for the kind of anti-Malathion spring. Um, no, it's, it's, not it's not doing anti. any good. Anti-anti. Yeah, yeah. Anti-squared, you know. Okay. No, they, I mean, they, they want to stop Malathion spring. Oh, they do? Because it says save the medfly. Save the medfly. Don't, don't kill the medfly. Right, so don't spray. Like, right, so don't, don't spray. Okay. Well, they're anti-spring. Hey, Dave, anti how about a cartoon? <laughs> uh, we're on a roll here. We're on a roll. Uh, call Steve Rhodes here at Continental Cable Visions anytime during the week, and he can let you know where you can get your own personal Save the Med Fly. But in the meantime, we are giving away the Quintessential Covina shirt. Actually, and the first person to fax us, I mean, a lot of people have faxes at home now. Uh, we'd like to give out the fax number, if that's okay, Steve. Ooh. And if anybody who sends us a fax saying, I would like a QC t-shirt, we'll give you one. I'm going to call my wife and have her fax you so I can get Okay. One. <coughs> it's a deal. So, well, you better hurry because I said the first one. So, yeah. and that and that fax number is. Is it still nine six seven four seven seven nine? What did he say? Yeah. Okay, yeah. it's nine six seven four seven seven nine. I can remember that. It's been a year. So, um, so fax us and say I want a QC T-shirt, but be sure to put your name. <coughs> but remember, just the fax, please. Yeah, just the um, fax, please. Oh. The fax, man. Oh. That was a that was a that was a Rob joke. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. Um, well, that's true, Marty. You know, one, one, one thing that has been always, was always a big element, especially towards the end of QC, was the wonderful uh, cartoon. The cartoon. The cartoon. And I hear we have a very, very special edition cartoon tonight. Oh, wow. By, by uh, the Bandrew, we affectionately call them. So are we ready with that? 
Yeah, well, okay. Here is our cartoon. So enjoy it. And now, the continuing saga of Rex Morgan, M.D. Where is my son now, officer? An emergency at Memorial Hospital. It would appear that he has been beaten and left by the side of the road. The doctor here in emergency says that Jeffrey is semi-conscious, Mrs. Lake, and his condition is guarded. Do you have a family physician? Yes, Dr. Rex Morgan. I'll get in touch with him right away. And it will be helpful if you can get here as soon as possible. I never should have let Jeffrey leave this house. It's all my fault. I drove him away. Meanwhile... I reached Jeffrey's mother. She'll be here within a half hour. Good. He may have some internal bleeding that will require surgery. You had better come and see Mr. Lake. His blood pressure is falling. And I'm having difficulty getting it. Tune in next time when we hear Mama say... Ouch! Hi, Dick the Bear here. We were going to use this part of the show to tell you what Dave and Marty have been up to lately. I know what you're thinking. Who gives a pig's lung? So instead, we're going to give you a few hints to help the environment. Hint number one. Hey, don't piss in the woods. I live there, damn it. Look for a freaking AM, PM. Uh, hi, station manager Andy Kravitz here. Can we say piss on the show? Ah, uh, don't be such a pisshead. Maybe we should get a thesaurus. Uh, hey, can we get a production assistant to hunt one of those things up? We could compromise on a less uh, controversial word. Maybe uh, tinkle. Like, uh, don't tinkle in the woods, don't be a tinkle head. It just might be funnier. Hint number two. While you and your loser crud head friends are hugging the toilet, getting rid of all that cheap beer you drank so you can forget that sorry excuse of a lop you lead, Dick's choking on these stupid plastic things that held the beer better than your sissy boy stomachs. Before I continue, I'd just like to remind you that if you so much as describe me, Dick the Bear, let alone draw me, I'll sue your lazy butt faster than you can say plagiarism. Hint number three. I know a boycott of fast food chains that use styrofoam might cut down on the options of dining establishments that you studs can take your babes to on dates. But hey, don't worry, most chicks will go all the way even if you don't buy them dinner. I think now would be a good time to tell you that Dick's views do not, I repeat, do not represent the views of myself or this station. Hint number four. Sure, recycling aluminum cans is great. But hey, have a little self-respect. Don't go look in your neighbor's trash. That's what bag ladies are for. Hint number five. Don't use lighter fluid. It's bad. The fumes escape into the atmosphere and help destroy the ozone layer. Just do what Dick does. Eat raw meat. Oh, okay, Dick. That's fine. You can go now. Who the hell are you? I think Dick meant to say, who the heck are you? I'm Marty. I'm one of the stars of this little TV show. TV? Is this a TV show? I thought this was Cable. Say, where's your little friend Dave? We just couldn't find anyone willing to draw him. Say goodnight, Dick. Good night, Dick. Any rebroadcast or retransmissions of these words or pictures without the expressed written permission of Art Gallego or his kinfolk is strictly prohibited. This has been an Art Gallego presentation, darling.
Only on cable. Oh my God! Oh. Wow, that was incredible. Um, as as was uh, usually the policy, and uh, oh, there's a call Here comes coming the calls in. Now. There um, goes the phones. Whether it was wise or not, we, we usually did not preview the cartoons submitted to us. And uh, although we did uh, enjoy we did, it, we hope we everybody else this is All the laughter doesn't mean we necessarily <laughs> found it entertaining at all. Not at all. I don't want to go to jail over this, so <laughs> don't worry. Hello, caller. Howdy. Hey, who's hey. this? This is Sean Murphy. Hey, Sean Murphy, Marty, remember me? Park today? That's right. Oh, that's Sean, right. Big Sean. That's right. You'll be on. Well, that's what I'm waiting for. You'll be on. <laughs> uh, when, when is his? When is his? This is uh, bumper number two, so he's after. You got to watch the whole show. Oh, See, you're stuck of course, I'm taping it. Are you kidding? It could okay. be. I it could be in about ten seconds, or it could be in about <laughs> two what hours. Do, what do you think of the cartoon? Oh, I loved it. Yeah, I loved it. It's just that that Bart Simpson kind of thing we're talking about today. Uh -huh, yeah, yeah, a little uh, sure was. realism. You got it. Yeah, Social commentary. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, what are you doing tonight? Ah, uh, just watching your show, videotaping it. You know, the standard Saturday night for all city employees. Yeah. Uh, I believe that's, that's right. where Chris and uh, Don are right now, at home watching it. <laughs> yeah, it seems uh, like Chris, Chris is on his way, I believe. Oh, so. uh, But, uh, well, how did, how did the uh, Monrovia uh, bash go the rest of the time? Oh, it went, it went pretty well. They staggered away. Yeah. It wasn't too bad. Actually, you know that clean and sober one? Mm -hmm. I saw a few guys sneaking out the back with a paper bag mm, okay. Ooh, with beer balls in it, so I don't think they're that clean so. Well, uh, how would you, oh, have we got any faxes yet? No. Looks like I can see the faxes. Oh, well, Sean, you get a t-shirt. Really? Yeah. yeah. Hey. What, uh, we got medium and extra large. Extra large. Okay, that's what I thought. That's all you need for Big Sean. Yep. Mm. Well, uh, we're going to have to make some special arrangements, but I think what it's going to happen is you're going to have to come down here to get it. Next hey, week. no problem. So we'll, Piece of cake. we'll be talking to somebody in the control room about that, but uh, we'll, we'll have your name on one. What's, what's your last name? Murphy. Murphy, okay. That's Is right, Mick Irish. We, we used to go to the other guy, Mick Murphy. Mick, yeah, Mick, his brother, his cousin. No Mick, no Mick. No. Well, you'll get our special edition QC t-shirt. What does it say? It says, reunion show, August 18th, 1990, no axe to grind, just a point to make. Gee. You got a point there, Mike. Yeah. But if you comb your hair right. The other side, you cover it up. I know. Um, <coughs> sorry. No, too sorry. Well, uh, thanks for calling, Sean. Well, thanks for having me on, guys. Well, it's it no problem. Yeah, just stay glued to that TV set. You'll see yourself. You will see yourself, well. and we used your your interview <coughs> effectively. You're yeah. going to enjoy the way it's used. Even that little joke. No, no. the joke. Oh. We're saving for our own little private. Yeah, collection. thanks, guys. Thanks. Be, yeah. I'll take screening. Yes. Outtakes. Thanks, Sean. Okay, okay. See you guys later. Okay. Bye, bye. Yeah, it's just about time to get to the news. Is it really? I wonder, did Mansville make it here? Is Margaret Wolf here? Anybody is, here? Anybody, is anybody here? Is anybody here? Anybody out there? Actually, we probably have more people here than are watching. But, uh, yeah, probably. There's nothing unusual about that. No, yeah. that's why we do like this. It's like old times. Yep, that's the way it's feeling. But tonight <laughs> you've had three more phone calls than I ever remember you guys getting. Oh, thanks. Ooh. You set the record, though. Did I? Right after, it was, it was pretty right. close after the news broke about Irwindale a little while back, or within a couple of months, we had you on in our little recorder out there where there was a, the, the phones go into a little machine and it clicks on. Right. We had like 93 phone calls that night. I said the we record? Didn't, yeah. And I didn't know that? And I find out on the last day when you guys are going out of business? <laughs> yeah. So funny, the last day was a year between, between the previous day. Wow. But yeah. Well, you know, that makes it all the more, uh, you know, makes me happier that I came tonight to say, you know, goodbye to you guys because... Uh, this was really, it really was fun, you know, and I mean, I've, you know, I've Thank done you. the other stuff, but you guys are, you guys are different. You know, you're, you're down to earth. No, 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 you're down to earth, you're natural, you know. It's a little strange sometimes. Yeah, well, it's all part of it, you <laughs> know. But that's, you know, and then you got Robojock over here, you know. <laughs> Robojock. Robojock. Big, big Rob. Big yeah, yeah, big Rob. Don Johnson. You got that deep voice. Yeah. Question is, how come you're still here? With a voice like that, you ought to be doing big time. Yeah. He's well, trying. We're working on it. It's trying. It's the clothes. It's the uh, Miami, um, you know, vice look. Yeah. It's out. Yeah. It is he the 90s. You had to be wearing what that the guitar player is wearing there. Yes, sir. Uh, unfortunately, that's what's in. Exactly. <laughs> Ooh. Ooh. Well, thanks for stopping by. <clears throat> it's been my pleasure. It's my pleasure. A beautiful and, uh, thing, indeed. Hey, listen. Wow. I, uh, you know, I just wanted to, I, I tried to get here before 9 to say goodbye to you guys, but I'm kind of glad that I dropped them when I did. Yeah. yeah. Um, you, you saved us a little bit of consternation yeah. here. Yeah. And, and I will give you two extra tickets to give away to, um, you know, a Raider game. Great. <clears throat> and, 
you know, I'll, uh, I'll drop them off tomorrow. I'll cool. Get a hold of you or whatever. Okay. Great. Okay. Fantastic. Yeah, 50 yard line seats. You know. Do you have my number? <laughs> yes, I do. Okay. If you haven't, you know, changed I have it. Not, I have not changed. Okay. 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 I met a guy today who said he's had the same number for 15 years. He says that way the bill collectors never find you because they just expect you to change the number, <laughs> <laughs> so they never call the old number. Faxes. Faxes at nine six seven four seven seven nine. And get a T-shirt. Get a quintessential Covina special edition reunion T-shirt. I wear a small. Two colors. I wear a small. Do you have that in small? Yeah, I, I got a medium. Yeah. I got a medium. But they're 100% cotton, so it'll shrink. Oh, it's it'll shrink. Great. Yeah. So it'll yeah. be just, just small. Just right. Just yeah. right. Okay, well, let's, uh, let's throw it to the news. Uh, Margaret Wolf is on tape tonight, and uh, stay tuned for a fantastic newscast. See you in a few. since our last show. For example, the new city hall has been completed. After four and a half million dollars and after much debate, the city hall was dedicated in conjunction with the downtown redevelopment program on June 9th. 1990 was an election year for Covina City Council. Henry Morgan, Bob Lowe, and Chris Richardson vied for council positions. And on the first Tuesday in April, Henry Morgan and Chris Richardson rounded out the five-member council. From these members, Chris Lancaster was appointed the new mayor of Covina. In fulfilling his many duties as mayor, Lancaster joined other officials from East San Gabriel Valley cities testifying against the redistricting of the county at a recent Los Angeles County Board of Supervisors meeting. Mayor Lancaster, what did you come down to the supervisor, supervisors meeting to do today? We came down here today to ask the county for assistance in financial assistance and helping the communities of the Eastern San Gabriel Valley uh, in submitting an amicus brief on behalf of the eastern end of the San Gabriel Valley cities. Okay, quickly, what is the amicus brief? An amicus brief is a friend of the court brief that we wish to submit to the Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals relative to the redistricting plan that is currently under appeal with that court. And basically what this will do is it will give our side of the story relative to this redistricting plan. It's one of the few political or legitimate political approaches you can put upon a court. But the fact of the matter is, is we feel that we were an afterthought of this whole redistricting reapportionment and we want our chance to be heard or our day in court. Now that's why, why do you feel isolated? You mentioned earlier that you did feel isolated, the communities within well, the East Sangaro Valley. Well because at one point we were unified 31 cities and now the judge, Judge Canyon, has cut that 31 cities up into three districts. Therefore we have lost our political punch or political power and these 31 cities have many things in common and now we've been lumped into other districts which we don't have much things in common for example Covina is now grouped in a district with this with the city of Palmdale I mean we don't have anything in common with Palmdale and vice versa and like Walnut the city of Walnut has been lumped into a district as large as uh, with the city of Long Beach so, you know, it, there's just some discrepancies here and some unfair politics is what we like to de depict it as. So this brief, this amicus brief will cost approximately, what you said, ten to fifteen thousand dollars? Ten to fifteen thousand dollars and we have met, the cities are in the process of adopting resolutions to appropriate monies uh, up to five hundred dollars, which we feel that we can raise legitimately through our own general funds, probably five to six thousand dollars. Well, supervisors Antonovich and uh, I believe it was Dana were, were not very happy with it. I think they were afraid that this would open a Pandora's box. And Kenny Hahn also got in there and he said that that if we did it for this community, they wouldn't have to do it for other communities as well. well How do you feel about that? Well, I disagree with that because there's other parts of the district that weren't really weren't affected. But the San Gabriel Valley is the one area in LA County that was really cut up with a crayon, if I could use that phrase. And so I'd have to disagree. Right. This is a legitimate cause. It's a, it's a legitimate purpose. And I can't see why Dean Dana and Mike Antonovich would vote against it. And I'll be honest with you, as far as I'm concerned, Mike Antonovich and Dean Dana have fired the first shot of hostility towards the communities in the East San Gabriel Valley. It sounded like uh, the chair, chairperson, uh, um, Peter Barm. Thank you, Peter Barm. He was really actually 
for you. He was trying to, he sent up a motion that he would, uh, the county would sponsor approximately half of the cost of this yeah, brief. Right. Now what? There was no motion, to the second motion on this. Now what's going to happen? You well, said that they fired the first shot. Now what is, the ball is in your court, it seems. Well, we're going to have to go back and raise money. Uh, we're probably going to have to appeal to some of the members in the business community. Uh, the point I want to make here is very clear is that this is the type of lack of security that we as the eastern end of the San Gabriel Valley feel because when you divide us up like this and you take away our political power, uh, for example, now we're in Mike Antonovich's district and Dean Dana's district, some cities, uh, we have not voted for them. We have never endorsed them. We have never raised money for them. So they have no political loyalties to us whatsoever. And so this is what I illustrated here today, and this is exactly what we're talking about, is that we have no sense of security, and uh, therefore we're losing our identity with L.A. County. Okay. Thank you very much, sure. Marilyn Custer. Thank you. Recently, Covina became the recipient of a very special gift from the people of Jalapa in the state of Veracruz, Mexico. Approximately 100 people showed up for the formal dedication of the Olmec head. It is a gift from the people of Jalapa, Covina's sister city, in the state of Veracruz, Mexico. What we have here is not only a symbol of international friendship, but a resource for students and teachers alike to study the remains of the first true culture in North America. The Olmec culture flourished between 1200 and 900 B.C. It took nine months to carve this replica, which is of the same stone composition and dimensions as the original displayed in the Museum of Anthropology in Jalapa. What are the people of Jalapa saying by sending this gift? The people of Jalapa means a lot with this uh, Olmec head because it's, uh, it's a heritage. But it means um, one of the main uh, cultures of Mexico started in, Oaxaca, in Jalapa. This rock is going to be here forever. And so I think that this gift demonstrates our faith and ability and our friendship for the future. And that's what it is. It's, it's definitely a gift of friendship between the communities. The four and a half ton replica rests in front of the police department. The Covina Sunrise Rotary held their ninth annual fiesta. They're raising money for Operation Smile, which is a dental program that will help children in Ensenada and Tijuana. Operation Smile takes place south of the border with the help of the Rotarians and University of Southern California dental students. The objectives are to provide dental service to children in orphanages who would have the most to gain over the long term with dental work done early enough to make a difference in their lives. It's a, it's a very fulfilling, gratifying uh, project. We all love it. Uh, it's a hands-on type of project. Everybody gets to work. Uh, the wives get to assist the, uh, the dentists while they're working on the children. And it's just a very fulfilling project. Ah, the sounds of San Francisco. But wait, this is Covina, and that must be the clang, clang, clang of the red car trolley. It's Covina's newest transportation service and its own version of the blue line and the red line. Two trolleys will now be shuttling passengers to various points of interest in the city, covering 24 miles. The service just became available this past Wednesday. Certainly, it's the, the most important thing is the, is the convenience of our citizens. Secondly, I would hope that by them using the trolley, they would shop in Covina, Hence, doing two things, aiding the local businesses and also aiding the city through tax dollars. The expected cost to the city is approximately $175,000, but it will only cost riders 50 cents each way. Well, that's it for Covina Newsstand. Thank you for watching, but stay tuned for more of Marty and Dave on Quintessential Covina. Oh, my goodness. Uh, welcome back. Uh, thanks welcome for that back. news, Margaret. That was a fantastic report. And uh, quickly, I'd like to introduce, of course, our guest, the Honorable Chris Lancaster. Welcome to Quintessential Covina. Thank you. Again. Nice to be. Now, yeah, the last time yeah. you were. Another welcome. You were yeah. a, a recently elected to the city council at, the, at that point, but you actually were on as the administrative aide to State Senator, State William, Senator Campbell. William Campbell. Exactly. Who's no longer a senator. He's who, not. Who's okay. retired and went on to become the president of the California Manufacturers Association, which probably is the most powerful lobbying business organization in the state of California. Aha. Uh -huh. <laughs> nice move there. Yeah. Uh, we got a fax. Um, <laughs> Thanks, Ron. It was 
Okay. <laughs> I, yes, want a I want a t-shirt, you jerks. Uh, this is uh, this is from uh, uh, an old pal of ours, uh, Ron Capitosto. And we uh, accentuate uh, old. Yeah. Uh, uh, and uh, uh, don't worry, you jerk, you'll get one. Uh, this is the first, <laughs> the first fax we've gotten here. Uh, I mean, look at this fax button. He's got an airplane on it. He's got the Century 21 Lytle company. That's his company. By his computer. Another airplane. Maybe he owns airplanes now. What do you think? Yeah. Um, well, Ron. Know, Ron. It's good, good to hear from you, Ron. Yeah, he's quite a guy. I mean, yeah. I, I think he was here earlier. He he been here. Thanks for that fax, Ron. Anybody else, please, please send in a fax, yeah. and you'll get a T-shirt. Oh, um, that was very cool. Oh, oh. thank you. We got a okay, so the uh, first fax has come in. Uh, T-shirt goes out to Ron Capitosto. First of all, do I get a T-shirt? You get a T-shirt. Okay. Absolutely. Thank you. Absolutely. Do you like them? Thank you. Yeah, yeah I like them. That's uh, really nice. But it looks like uh, you have no budget once again. And Single color. Single color. No, it's we have colors. to thank. Uh, it's got black on the other side. Oh, yeah, there's black on the other side. That's true. And there's, look at the shirts. Why? It's three colors. Yeah. Three colors. You know? <coughs> Not bad, huh? Yeah. For no budget. Uh, midnight Impressions up the street did those four. No kind of budget. See, that's like Covina. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> oh! Ooh. 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 Uh, so, Chris, uh, <laughs> you're, you know, I really like sitting next to Marty. He makes me look thin. Okay, no, 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 no. Some true, true. jabs true. going on here. Okay. <laughs> Marty, put that knife away. Okay. Yeah, really. It is. Um, it is. Safely in the booth. Uh, <laughs> so, Chris, your tenure as mayor began when? Began last April. Um, my colleagues uh, decided to appoint me mayor. And um, How much does that cost you? I mean, um, <laughs> no, I, that was, no, slip of the tongue. I mean, how does, how does that happen? It well, was, how does it happen? Fun. you got to get at least three people, including yourself, on the council who... Um, who wish to have you as mayor, and uh, some cities do it differently. They just appoint, uh, they just rotate the council people on a board to become mayor, but in our city, <coughs> it's a little unique from the standpoint that you have to get at least three people who think you ought to be mayor. And um, I like that better than rotating the council people to become mayor because I feel confident when I'm out there speaking for on behalf of the city that I represent the majority of the opinion of the council. A mandate. Yeah. No, a, man, great. a man with a mission. Yeah, now um, what is, uh, what is different about being mayor as opposed to being one of the council people well, besides the title? Well, you become the spokesperson for the community, but uh, also you do all the public relations type of things where, you know, we, like I went down to Ensenada with the Rotary Service Club and we did that uh, operation. So, yeah, and we do other things. Right one, one, one second, please. You're right with you. And uh, <laughs> <laughs> you, know, you conduct, all the, you conduct <laughs> all the council meetings and you do all the PR things. And like this morning, I had breakfast with the senior citizens and honoring their senior of the month. Uh, honoree, and uh, then I went over to the library in honor of the uh, the student or the children who uh, were in the short story contest. We had over fourteen hundred applications for short stories uh, entered, so it's wow. it's 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 a lot of PR and a lot of things like that. Who but won? Uh, we had, had well, they had several. They had about uh, a dozen or so different age groups. Mm -hmm. Right. So yeah, it's those type of things, and also I've been heavily involved with the leading of the communities relative to the redistricting plan uh, and opposing which Judge Canyon has brought down upon L.A. County. Right. And if you want to get into that, we can talk about that. Great. But I got Good. some we personal got feelings about that. But I want to know, you look great with makeup on. Thank you. You know, we didn't get any makeup, but he got makeup. You didn't well, get makeup? No, we didn't That's because you were late. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Marty has makeup on. Michelle Miller would have done a He fine sweated job. all off, oh. though. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Hello, caller. Yes. Who's this? Dave and Marty. Yes. How are you guys doing? Okay, who's this? Okay, I've been on your show three times. It's Xavier. Xavier Hermosillo. <laughs> oh, great. No, remember Sean Hutchinson? Oh, Sean. How are you guys doing? Hey, Sean, we, we, just wow. lost, we just lost volume here. Hello? Oh, yeah, okay, there you okay, are. Okay, we got you. Yes, well, how, how are you still playing? Yes, I had, uh, I'm back early. She had uh, arm surgery in Atlanta. Oh. And okay. uh, things are going very good for me. I still have a contract for next year in spring training. Well, and fantastic. Everything's going really good, you know. Hey, I went down to the cable station in November. I got back from a structuring in West Palm Beach, Florida. Uh -huh. And I and I went down there to see if you guys were still there, and I gave him two baseball cards to give to you. I don't know if if you ever got it. Did you receive them? I no. think one's coming in the door right now. As a matter of fact, something. <laughs> what is this? Look at that, Sean. Oh, oh big Sean. It's even autographed. All Check right. Yeah, there. We gotta get a shot of this. Look at. Yeah. Wow. Can I, can I see yeah, that? sure. Sean, how old are you? I'm 20 years old. And where did you play ball? Northview High School. And uh, you're, you're signed with the Braves? Yeah, I play professional baseball. Yeah, I, I, I can see that. Uh, a proud man. Yeah, this is the, truly an honor for the community. That's cool. Yeah, it's truly an honor. All right. Dude, Big Sean. Dude. We knew you back when. <laughs> yeah. That's great. 
Best of luck to you, guy. Yeah, thanks a lot. Um, you guys have been great, and uh, you guys should get your own show somewhere. We've had some great times yeah. with the show. You we guys both so. know that. You Thank know, you. I was on there in 1987 when we won the CIF championship. I was on there when I got drafted. I was on there. Uh, uh, well, actually, he's only been on twice. He was on, um, you did that year-end thing. That's right. He was on. The of the you've been on the cable three times, but you've been on our show twice. No, 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 no. Okay, I've been on there in 1987 when we won the CIF championship at Northview High School. Northview won CIF in 87. It was me and Beverage. Remember yeah, that? Yeah, that, that wasn't QC. It was a different oh, okay, show. Okay. Yeah. yeah, you know, you were but still you've been on, on three cool. times. Yeah, cool. you've, uh, you've dominated it's the cool. airwaves here. It's cool. It was right. great. I'm not going to argue with a man with a bat. <laughs> and, <laughs> yeah. you know, what we'd like to do is uh, send you back to uh, when you start playing again with, uh, with one of these great shirts. That'd be great. Do we have the other card here, guys? Or they're just one. Somebody just walk away with one. This is mine. We might so need another card. Yeah, I can get you guys a card. Okay. Great. We'll trade you a shirt right. for a card. Okay. So you're back in town right now? Yeah. Yes, I'm doing uh, physical rehabilitation in Covina. Uh huh. It's uh, in the corner of Badillo and Hallbeck. It's Lee Russo's office. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I know Lee. Real close to my house. Yeah, and. Uh, what yeah. happened? Did you get hurt? Yes, I had. I tore my labrum in my arm. Throwing a guy out at second base. Yeah. And it's getting a lot better, though. You know, Dr. Chandler is the one that cut on me in uh, Atlanta. I was in Piedmont Hospital for about a week. Wow. And, uh, but uh, I've been doing a lot of physical rehabilitation. The braids are very, very high on me still, and uh, I still got a yeah. contract for next year. And, uh, you know, I'm doing uh, rehab every day, and, you know, everything's coming great. Sean, wow. Sean, did you get a bonus when you signed out of high school? Yeah. What, how large of a bonus did you get? <laughs> uh, more than you make. <laughs> oh! Oh! <laughs> <laughs> Good answer. Double. <laughs> <laughs> he slides in a second. <laughs> Safe. <laughs> Sean, best of luck to you. I know that's an exciting opportunity yeah, thanks, in your that's life. That's a lot of fun, you know. I, I, you know, I travel around a lot of, around the country and everything for the last three years, and uh, one of the best cities I've ever been to is Covina. <laughs> no, it's joking. It's a great city and everything like that. You know, Southern California is a place for professional baseball. There's more professional baseball players out of Southern California and the West Covina and Covina area than anywhere in the world. Huh. And um, it's because you can play all, all year long. You can play in winter, and you can play in the summer, fall and spring, and there's no place like that, really, around. The next place is Florida. Oh, that's too muggy there. And the next place is Florida. Yeah, it's too muggy, man. You go down there, there's mosquitoes, alligators, lizards, yeah. humans, <laughs> you know? Yeah. Too muggy. It's like being in the studio. Yeah, right it's now. a little muggy yeah. here. Yeah, yeah, I'll tell you. Okay, guys, I'll let you guys go back to your show. You guys, had, you guys are great. Thank you, Sean. And, Thanks um, so much. Best of luck. You, yeah. Too bad you guys are going off the air, you know. you got a lot of fans Well, we there. already are off the air. You, know, yeah, but you guys have a point to make, don't you? Yeah, yeah we do. but no <laughs> actually make that point before There's the about 20 over. girls out there with Dave and Marty signs outside your door right now. <laughs> and uh, they're just going nuts, I hear. All right. Uh, Especially thanks. like yeah, you good. said, I like the big guy. This one chick's got the sign that says, I like the big guy on it. Who's that? Huh? I don't know, but huh? they have that wood sign. Okay, well, send them down. Okay. 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 Take care, guys. Come on, visit us. Bye. Okay, bye-bye. Yeah, See you, Sean. Good luck. Yeah, one of the one of the Kavina boys that made well. Yeah. John Hutchinson. I hope he does. Guy. He's been, you know, he was always... Was it Jerry Monica Wallach? Lynn. Jerry Wallach, yeah. No. I don't know. I wonder what's up with Jerry. Yeah. Yeah. We're getting them both on. They, they both, at, at the signed. same time, had gotten signed by teams. I forgot yeah. who he got signed with. Listen, uh, i got a question for you. Yeah. What is the purpose of the earring, Dave? I mean, what's the message with that earring <gasps> that you No have? message. It's purely... Um, has nothing to do with there. Just, just, just the core, huh? Yeah. Just, yeah. No it's, sexual it's orientation yeah. Uh, <laughs> indication. Or it's just, it's it's just, just a de gig. decoration. Yeah. Okay. Hello, caller. How's it going? Good, how okay, are you? Need more volume, please. How's it going? Okay. Good, how are you doing? Who's this? Great. I wanted to speak to the mayor about uh, a couple topics. Go. Yeah, I wanted to find out. Uh, Who is this? Wh what's your name? Oh, my name's Rich. Hi, Rich. I wanted to find out what's going on with uh, skateboarding in Covina. Is skateboarding a crime? <laughs> well, it's my understanding it's a, it's a crime downtown to skateboard. By the outhouse? No, just downtown the Citrus uh, on, the, on the sidewalks and so forth. I guess it provides to be a nuisance with some of the shoppers. So running over people's toes and things like that. So. Ouch. I think a lot of the shoppers are becoming a nuisance with the skateboarders also. <laughs> yeah, you got a point. I think that's one of the points we wanted to make. Uh, yeah. I think Covina needs a... Uh, a skateboard park or at least a paved area where all the skateboarders can get together and uh, do some safe skateboarding instead of causing all this uh, controversy back and forth with the people of Covina and us uh, skateboarders. I'm, I'm sorry, what, what is your name, sir? My name's Rich. Rich, why don't you do me a favor? 
Why don't you uh, organize, I guess if there's, if there's a lot of skateboarders out there, why don't you organize and come down to a um, city council meeting one night and during oral communications come before us and talk about this issue. Bring it before the whole council and let's, let's hash it out. Talk I think about it. maybe if we can get together, get a couple of them trolley cars to pick all the skateboarders up because everyone's <laughs> going to have to ride their board. No, hang on the back. Hey, it's, <laughs> only, it's only 50 cents. Yeah, what a deal. So. No, Rich, you, you ought to do that. Um, you, you'd be surprised how much you can get done by showing up and. Uh, yeah, if you can organize and bring down 15 or 20 guys with all your skate or young ladies with, uh, with skateboards Skateboard and come down and, and make a pitch. You know, we'd be love to uh, love to hear from you. Sure, I'm I'm sure they'd get a few thousand people down there easily. <laughs> so, anything else on your mind? Um, well, I wanted to find out if I get a T-shirt. Oh, uh, sure. Extra large, okay. Sure, extra large, they shrink. They shrink. Yep, they sure do. 100% cotton. cotton. Haynes. Hmm. Yeah, Inspected by number 12. Sure. Uh, yeah, just uh, we, had a, we had a pretty good event today over at Covina Park. That seemed to have went pretty good today with the uh, the three bands that played there. Oh, that's oh, right. Was that the, uh, the uh, clean and sober thing? Yeah. That what, I guess. what was that about? Well, it was pretty much the clean and sober committee. They were having their reunion out there for, I guess, their annual thing they have with the bands that that play there. There was two or three guys that weren't so clean and sober that the cops had to come in and uh, arrest. So there was a little trouble out there, but besides for that, it went pretty good. Well, that's good. Now, we were out at the park. We didn't, uh, we didn't uh, stop in over there, but uh, we talked to some people over at the park today, and you'll be seeing some of that. I guess next Wednesday night they're going to have a gong show. Oh, is that next Wednesday? Yeah, next Wednesday night that's, they have a gong show. That's great. Show. Here, here we go. This is, this is information that's been up on the channel about uh, what happened today. And so oh, next week is the gong show. That's fun. I've had some great fun at that. I think they got some like 38 acts. Yeah. Wow. They're going to be performing. It grows every year. Yeah. Yeah, I imagine it uh, really does. And these are real serious performers. Yeah, all gong show performers <laughs> are. They take themselves real seriously. Oh, absolutely. Hey, did the mayor ever do any skateboarding? You know, when I was a kid, I did. And uh, I took a so nasty... last year? Yes, last year. I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> I had to throw that one. When I used to live in Sacramento, I was, I was a skateboarder. And uh, I made the mistake of skating down a hill, an uh, asphalt hill, and took a bad dive and scarred up my knees, which I still have the scars today. But uh, yeah, I've skateboarded. And uh, I was probably never as good as you. But uh, I've but had my... But then who is? I've had... Yeah. <laughs> But I've had my day on the skids with the with the skateboard. Yeah, mo most skateboarders don't wear socks. That's why I was curious. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I think it's time. Oh, here goes Kelly. Check this out. Uh, good okay, <clears throat> that na, is the foot. Na, the na, 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 okay. Okay. okay Rich, thanks so much for calling. <laughs> All right. Uh, what about that shirt? How do I get that? You gotta come down here and get it. We'll uh, li make, leave your name and uh, phone number. Which I think you already have, right? Yeah, I gave it to him when I first called. Okay, called. well, this will just they'll, they'll mark down if you want a shirt, I believe. We should be writing down everybody who gets shirts, and so we know. Uh, so this and you, you come so down, you and uh, they'll be at the front desk. Can you make that too? Everybody volunteers. Uh, no, just one. So we're just, just we're shorthanded. We want to get one to everybody who calls, or some people who call, everybody who faxes. We're on a low budget here, so. Well, hopefully you'll get that resolved, and we'll keep the show going. Anyway, uh, thanks a lot for the shirt, and <laughs> see you later. Okay, thanks, thanks a lot. Rich. Bye. Bye-bye. Oh, Thank you, Rich. Thank you for your interest. Skateboarders. Um, Absolutely. It's 10 o'clock. It is 10 o'clock. And I want to rock. Any, uh, any word from Don out there? No? Okay. Okay. If anybody knows, Don Fletcher, we got an all-points bulletin out for her. <laughs> Please, supposed to be here. give her a call. If you know where she is, go get her. Tell her. Well, listen, come down if, she here. Does, if she does not show, does that mean you got to sing? Well, what we were going to we'll show, we're, no, thing. it means you got to sing. Yeah. <laughs> well, you're in, for, you're in for a big shot. <laughs> we can still, hey, we can still show her things we'll from show the show. Well, she, she was on the okay. show. Okay, hello, caller. Hello, caller. Hello. Hello. Who's this? This is Sharon. Hi, Sharon. Hi. What's Hi. up? Uh, Mr. Lancaster, um, I'd like to know how long you've been mayor in Covina. Since April. You weren't listening. Since, Since April? April. Yeah. And how did you go about doing this? Does it run in the family? Or? <laughs> Filled out an application. And, uh, <laughs> well, is, is it Sharon? Uh huh. Sharon, I was elected in 88. And uh, at this past election, um, we decided to reorganize as far as the council was concerned and appoint a new mayor and a new mayor pro tem. 
And after discussing with my colleagues, uh, we thought it would be best if I become mayor and Gary Coffey, Councilman Coffey, become the mayor pro tem. So that's how it came about. And you see it runs in the family. Well, yeah, I guess it does. My father was uh, the mayor of DeWarty at age 30, and oh. I'm 31. Really? And he asked me the other day, he said, what took me so long? So <laughs> really but Yeah, I, I guess you can say it runs in the family. And I find it interesting that you'd make that comment because I often think about that. I guess children do follow in the footsteps of their parents. I was just talking to a guy the other day. I hope not. <laughs> <laughs> One guy's a doctor and his son's becoming a doctor and, you know, a dentist and a dentist. I mean, it just seems to happen that way for some reason, what you're exposed to in your... It's called oh. nepotism. No. Oh. Also, I have another question. Sure. <laughs> since you, since they upgraded downtown Covina on Citrus there, why didn't they um, raise any funding for the uh, pool for the children? The one that's closed down over at um, Covina Park that wasn't open. Yeah. You know, we, uh, you, that's a good point. We, um, we had to cut uh, $400,000 out of our budget just to balance at this, uh, this time. And we... During the budget negotiations, the YMCA was discussing the fact that they were going to take over the pool and run it for us this year, and they backed out of it. And so we were left with already appropriating the monies, and then we'd have to cut another 20000 out of someplace else and make the pool operable again. But we found out that the pool also is, ser is seriously uh, uh, deficient as far as it's got a lot of cracks, it leaks a lot of water, and we're hoping to get a government grant in the next year to help refurbish that pool and bring it back to the community. Well, that would be nice. I think there should have been some kind of written agreement with the YMCA. Well, we were in that negotiations, and they, they felt pretty comfortable they were, able to gonna, they were gonna be able to do it. But as far as the money that was used downtown, that was uh, redevelopment money, and we couldn't use that in the park whatsoever uh, by law. So there are certain funds that we can use in certain places and money that we can use certain other places, and by law we couldn't use the money that would be appropriated downtown to be used in our parks. Oh, I see. So now, also, I, I agree with the skateboarder that was just on. If there was a skateboard park built for them, it'd keep a lot of more, you know, teenagers out of trouble. I, you know, you, you, you may be right. We've got to give kids and all their alternative you know, other than hanging on the streets. And um, there's just too many kids hanging out on the streets. Mm -hmm. Let me ask you, I, I don't know the status of, um, of uh, these type of skateboard parks, but is there a tremendous liability from the standpoint of getting insurance? Is that why we don't have skateboard parks? Probably, in probably. Okay. Because I know, I know a lot of... <laughs> since you, since they upgraded downtown Covina on Citrus there, why didn't they um, raise any funding for the uh, pool for the children? The one that's closed down over at um, Covina Park that wasn't open. Yeah. You know, we, uh, you, that's a good point. We, um, we had to cut uh, $400,000 out of our budget just to balance at this, uh, this time. And we... During the budget negotiations, the YMCA was discussing the fact that they were going to take over the pool and run it for us this year, and they backed out of it. And so we were left with already appropriating the monies, and then we'd have to cut another 20000 out of someplace else and make the pool operable again. But we found out that the pool also is, ser is seriously uh, uh, deficient as far as it's got a lot of cracks, it leaks a lot of water, and we're hoping to get a government grant in the next year to help refurbish that pool and bring it back to the community. Well, that would be nice. I think there should have been some kind of written agreement with the YMCA. Well, we were in that negotiations, and they, they felt pretty comfortable they were, able to gonna, they were gonna be able to do it. But as far as the money that was used downtown, that was uh, redevelopment money, and we couldn't use that in the park whatsoever uh, by law. So there are certain funds that we can use in certain places and money that we can use certain other places, and by law we couldn't use the money that would be appropriated downtown to be used in our parks. Oh, I see. So now, also, I, I agree with the skateboarder that was just on. If there was a skateboard park built for them, it'd keep a lot of more, you know, teenagers out of trouble. I, you know, you, you, you may be right. We've got to give kids and all their alternative you know, other than hanging on the streets. And um, there's just too many kids hanging out on the streets. Mm -hmm. Let me ask you, I, I don't know the status of, um, of uh, these type of skateboard parks, but there's there a tremendous liability from the standpoint of getting insurance. Is that why we don't have skateboard parks? Probably, in the probably. Okay. Because I know I know a lot of um, guys that have been hurt, you know, I mean, mm -hmm. seriously hurt. And if they're going to build something like this, they do have to. I mean, the insurance will be costly. Well, maybe we could turn the pool into one. I was going to say, that's, <laughs> that's <laughs> really people do Yeah, that, but then so. it's not fair to our younger kids. You know, we got to do something for the younger kids. You know, so we have to do something. No, the pool, the pool is a great program for the community. Oh, definitely. It really is. Definitely. In fact, my wife took swimming lessons there last year. 
Is there a chance that the pool is going to be reopened? Oh, yeah. We plan on uh, reopening it next year. We plan on getting a government grant. That pool is, is pretty old. Mm -hmm. uh, but, um, and from what I understand, it leaks a lot of water and is uh, very uh, cost inefficient. But uh, nevertheless, it's a program that is, that is well used in the community and well liked. Yeah, so. absolutely. It was just a financial mm -hmm. thing. That's right. all. Isn't well, hopefully that'll it's be not a, it's not a it's not a philosophical or policy. It's just a, it was just a financial thing. All right. Hopefully we'll be able to look forward to that next year. You bet. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Sharon. Okay. Well, exciting call from Sharon. Well, let, let's let's delve into a different <coughs> area here. And there's a <coughs> there was going to be a uh, um, we'll get to this call in just a second. Uh, I want to start open up a can of worms real quick. Um, there was going to be a uh, I love when Dave does that. a uh, county supervisor seat uh, open for re-election coming up uh, in November, but that's going to be put off now. Mm -hmm. And I don't know a lot about what that whole thing was, but maybe you could tell us a little bit about that. And I know you have some very strong feelings <laughs> in that area. Well, if you remember the um, uh, just a Judge Canyon of the federal court. Um, received some complaints by a few organizations called the American Civil Liberties Union and also MALDEF, which is a Mexican-American... Uh, Legal defense. Yeah. Like that. And mm -hmm. uh, their complaint was this, is that when the supervisors redrew the lines back in 81, that they discriminated against the Hispanic community by drawing the lines to weaken mm -hmm. their influence as far as votes are concerned. And he made that determination, and, but he, and then he redrew a district um, which was uh, all Hispanic, 69% Hispanic voters in that district. Uh, first of all, let me just say that it was never the intentions of the supervisors to draw the lines to weaken the, uh, the Mexican or the Hispanic uh, community. When they draw lines, they draw lines based on Republicans and Democrats. And if it just turned out to happen that there were most of the Mexicans were Democrats, well, that's what happened. I mean, they protect their own <laughs> districts. But Kenyon has virtually created a district that is virtually all Hispanic, and I'm concerned about that is that the message is this, is that if any Hispanic children want to run for office, they're going to have to move back to the barrios, so to speak, and wait for the incumbent to die in order to run. I mean, I think it's outrageous that you would create a district based on ethnic or ethnicity. Yeah. And I mean... Uh, Total segregation. Well, yeah, I mean, he cre what he did is he created, uh, he introduced to LA, to Los Angeles, uh, segregation and plantation politics to LA County. And uh, we have a real problem with that. But from Covina's standpoint, we are now in a district lumped in with uh, the 5th district, which is Mike Antonovich, Supervisor Mike Antonovich, who's from Glendale. I was going to say. I mean, he, well, has no yeah. Yeah, he has no clue what Covina is. We've never voted for him. We've never endorsed him. We've never raised money for him. Uh, he has no sense of loyalty towards so us. So Covina is in now, now is in technically the 5th district? Well, or not that, that was in, that's in the proposed Kenyan plan. <coughs> but you see, the East San Gabriel Valley is very interesting. We have 31 cities out here who are cohesive and have similar problems and concerns. I mean, this end of the county uh, receives 60% uh, of all of L.A. County's trash, you see. And also we have water problems out here. And I just don't foresee the <coughs> other supervisors taking our trash and putting it in that end of the district. Absolutely. You see, so, you know, you may not like Peacha Barm, or you may like him, but I'll tell you, he knew this district, Absolutely. and he knew the people, and he knew the problems. And so, but in a nutshell, that's what, what is I think we have a scene here of you uh, talking at the, uh, speaking to the... Uh, yeah, LA County that board. was, uh, joining me there was Mayor Bird Ashley from mm -hmm. Walnut, and Council Member Patrick Gaddy from uh, Laverne, and also Mayor Donna Smith from Pomona, Pomona and we had uh, Diamond Bars Mayor Gary Werner. And we also had the support of La Pointe Mayor Joe Alderetti. Uh, we also had Glendora's Mayor Bob Kuhn. And we had a total of about 11, 12 cities who were just outraged over Judge Kenyon's plan to really cut up um, yeah. the uh, San Gabriel Valley. You know, and I made this comment before the Board of Supervisors. I said, you know, you can almost liken this judicial reapportionment with the action taken by Joseph Stalin and Adolf Hitler when they partitioned Poland in 1939. You know, the tanks didn't roll in, but we've literally have had a judge who has uprooted our whole political and electoral process and has given us representation we didn't elect. And, uh, you know, if you remember, the citizens of Poland didn't have a vote either. Yeah. And so that's the similarity, yeah. is that now we have a representative that we didn't we, elect. Yeah, exactly. So that's, that's what we're outraged about. It's getting like Wilenzo over here. Yeah. Hello, caller. Is you there? Yeah, I'm here. Okay, it's your turn. All right, thanks. Who's uh, this? Yeah, I just want to say is that uh, you guys had a great show in the past. What? Uh, Thank you. What? Uh, not, no? what, what's your name? My name's Greg. Hi, Greg. Hey, Greg. How you doing? Yeah, Marty. I met you at a 7-Eleven store for a T-shirt. Remember that? 
Oh, that's right. <laughs> that's right. He followed me back to my house. Yeah, unfortunately, my wife inherited it for me, so uh, I'll ask for a T-shirt again tonight. <laughs> sure. Um, I just wanted to uh, ask the uh, mayor. Um, <laughs> let's get a little scenario here. If uh, Pete Wilson uh, wins the race for governor, um, you know, maybe the chances of uh, Mr. Dreyer being taking over the pointy, you know, or oh, yeah, the Senate, the, you know, uh, what, what what would your plans be? What are my plans? Sure. Well, be an, an empty uh, congressional seat there. <laughs> well, uh, let me let me first of all let me comment about let me let me talk about the governor's race and David Dreyer, and then let me come back and tell you what my plans are. Sure. Uh, Pete Wilson, uh, as you know, is running for governor, and if he's elected, then he has the opportunity to appoint his successor, really? in the United States senator's oh, uh, really? seat. So therefore, people are speculating that might be David Dreyer, from the standpoint David Dreyer's young. Uh, he's one of the leading Republican um, hopefuls in the party, and also he's sitting on a bank account of 1.5 million, which makes him very, very. And attractive. he was on our show. Kind of like me. Kind of like yeah. me. My bank account is not quite that big. Exposure on our show. So, so there, there's speculation that David Dreyer might be the the appointment, but there's also speculation from the standpoint that Ed Shaw might be the appointment. <coughs> Remember, Ed Shaw ran for United sure. States Senate. Sure. From the standpoint that there was a lot of money pumped into his uh, his race. And uh, the Republican leadership feel that, well, it would be a great return on that investment to appoint him. So there's also that talk as well. I know Bruce Hershenson is very, very much interested in that seat. Uh, State Senator John Seymour, who is very close to Pete Wilson, is also very much interested in that seat. So we'll just have to wait and see. But the first hurdle is if uh, Mr. Wilson gets elected. Yeah. Uh, but well, you, you know, getting to the, uh, the, uh, the council or on the, uh, the county supervisor splitting up the districts like they are, yeah. You know, if someone could sue over a matter to where, you know, on the on the racial type thing on for minorities and whatever, um, you know, for one thing, are they going to do an all-white district or all-Anglo district well, you know, all-black district and all-Oriental uh, district? And, and from there, you have to divide it up into like, Filipinos, Koreans, Vietnamese. I mean, it's, it's really... Um, it's asinine. I mean, if they can sue over that, then I, I myself as a Republican ought to be able to sue Willie Brown for not giving uh, Republicans the majority. You make a very, very good point. That's very, very <laughs> logical, and it's yeah. very, very uh, legitimate. Absolutely. You know, it's, uh, I don't know, it's kind of frustrating, but... Uh, I'm sure Martin Luther King is turning over in his grave over there. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, that's, that's why we live in this country, you know. We have our, you know, sure. yeah, we can voice our own opinions. Oh, absolutely. Know? That's what's uh, very, very great. Sure, but uh, anyway, thanks a bunch, and uh, other than that, you know, it's a uh, great city we live in. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Thank Greg. Bye-bye. Uh, okay, bye-bye. Great, and a very interesting call, uh, an informed viewer out there. Grateful to see they've got those type of viewers out there. Isn't it nice? <laughs> yeah, they're, they're past the second grade. Now, you know, their, their education <laughs> is going to... You to tell us your ambitions. Yeah, my ambitions. Well, I'll just tell you this. Um, I plan on making a career in public service and where that takes me, I don't know, I mean reapportionment's coming up in the next two years. Uh, they anticipate that we're going to get five new congressional seats out here. Uh, we don't know how the assembly seats are going to be <coughs> divided up here, the state senate seats. So I don't know, I'm just enjoying my tenure now as mayor and trying to do the best job I can. And, uh, do you get free that? trolley rides? No, no, I don't. No. I have to pay. Yeah, no. I have to pay. Any any other kind of good perks you get as mayor? Yeah. Any kind of other good perks? We're getting some Raider tickets. You're getting Raider tickets. Yeah. Shh, Marty. <laughs> <laughs> somebody else will too. Okay, somebody else. Okay, we. Are you giving out Raider tickets? Yeah, I think we're, we're trying to give out some Raider tickets. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. If Miss Covina shows up, then we're going to give those Raider tickets yeah. out. If you not, feel, you we'll feel pretty confident you're going to those out tonight. Aren't you? Is. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, um, Mayor, I would think that part of your area of responsibility might be to find out where Miss Covina <laughs> is and can you make this a couple shows out for her appointments. Do you have I her number? We no, should no. give out her phone no, number get, on the air. I know. We, let's get Robin and Larry out here to do their gig and then he can go out and make some calls. Actually, what we ought to need, need to do is get in touch with Randy Gordon, the executive director of Yeah, exactly. I, I, I ran into him today, too. Yeah, so but I'll, I, I see Dom Fletcher maybe two or three times a week at ribbon cuttings and uh, special events, and she does a spectacular job and represents <coughs> the city very, very well mm -hmm. from that standpoint. Very talented and lovely young lady. Uh, would really be an asset to your show. Mm -hmm. uh, we had hoped so. <laughs> I mean, look at me and Marty, anything. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Uh, oh, here's uh, Twin Peaks uh, right now, just so you know, in case anybody's uh, watching our show and missing okay, Twin Peaks. Yeah. This is There's a little Agent bit about Cooper. what's going on. Hey, oh, Ma, well, let's come back when, uh, is he already throwing the rocks? Uh, 
we got to see the. You know, I've never watched the show. Oh, beautiful Fantastic show. show. Great show. I've never seen. Fourteen it. Emmy nominations. Really? For, I didn't know that. Yeah. I saw um, Wild at Heart last night. I think I was talking about that. Controversial movie. Controversial movie. It, uh, to me, I think I, I've said this a couple times. It, uh, it is an exercise in excess. Um, you've got to you've got to really look at it for what it is. Um, is it, it's a movie that won top honors at Cannes, and when uh, David Lynch t went up to get the award, he got as many mm -hmm. boos as he did uh, applauds at Cannes in France, uh, the most prestigious film festival, really, I think, in in, in our time. Um, it's it's a it's an interesting movie, not for the kids, <laughs> definitely. Um, You'll see the Little Mermaid if you want to take the kids out. But yeah, it's it's worth seeing. It's it's a, it's, it's excessively violent. Uh, there's uh, explicit. Uh, Are you violent by nature? No, I'm not. I'm actually. Oh, not I watched. Really I watched that. Man, I'm not. I watched that uh, <laughs> Dick Dale show where uh, where uh, Lawrence called in and asked about the nature of man, and we all. Oh really? <laughs> yeah. Mm. We all do. Oh, I think we have a fax coming in here or something. We have a. You know, I went and um, a message. Fan mail from some flounder. I took my wife Somebody last night to go see that movie, that Ghost. Oh, how did you like Ghost? You know, I I, saw it. I uh, really enjoyed it, and I was. Um, did you cry? Uh, <laughs> I sniffed a little. I got a little yeah, misty. I did too, yeah, and uh, yeah. my wife was just sobbed through the like whole thing. Yeller. But you know, as, as I was walking in, it said Ghost, uh, a love story, and I thought, you know, it's just another love story, but it's got a unique uh, twist to it, and it's very, very interesting. I, I haven't uh, seen it, but I cry at the commercials. So uh, <laughs> uh, what's the matter? What are we? Something going on out there? Something's going on out here. What's, what's going on? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> Wayne Sakamoto trying He's to make an appearance there. there. Uh, Behind your back, Mayor. Yep. Hey, who's this picture of? I didn't catch it's Aunt it. Aunt Clara. Is that yours? She, yeah, she's, she's my deceased aunt. Ooh, she's beautiful. Well, thanks. Lovely she dress. was a little wacky, though. Was she, was, yeah. she was a wild She woman. was real she was wacky. She was different. So this here. She but, was a, but it's a, a wonderful David photo. Lynch character. Oh, okay. to, the, to this camera. To this camera. She was married for about four months, I think. Mm -hmm. yeah, okay. That was her wedding photo. And she, she's married for four months? Yeah. A, a real long time. she passed term. away? Or no, no, no. Then she got divorced. Oh. And then long after that, she passed away. But I, I got this photo. Oh, okay. So yeah, glad, game, glad she's I got, I got six grand picture. in this photo. Well, Did you yeah. get six grand for actually, her, didn't you? Actually, this is the better. Oh, my Six gosh. grand like that, I still have the photo. Um, well, you know, I think what might be a plan. Are, are we ready to uh, hear from Robin and Larry? Yeah, I think point? we're going to go to a break. And, and we'll be back uh, with Chris. Talk we'll be back with gonna, Chris. We're going to yeah, talk about Ensenada. Yeah. Absolutely. There's some uh, a very uh, special thing happened just uh, last weekend, where uh, some dental students had gone down to Mexico to uh, try to fight tooth decay down south of the border. And down. We'll, we'll talk in depth Ensenada way. about that. Now I think we've even got some more videotape on it. Maybe we can pick out some yeah, Rollins. Yeah, yeah. Pick out, and I'll do a little commentary on it. Absolutely. Sure. So uh, after this break, we come back uh, with Robin and Larry and their. Freeman well, you'll find report. out the Freeman. Weiner Report. The CACs. So how long are we gonna got a break for? Uh, from oh, great. Well, right now we are witnessing uh, some of the artistic work of uh, Olga Grijalva. And Olga, now, now what, what kind of things are you painting here? Uh, right now I'm painting a bear. I'm just, somebody wanted another color, so that's what I'm doing. So you're redoing your work for custom jobs? Yes. Right now, now Olga, there, there's been some uh, strange things that have been going on in the Middle East lately. What are your thoughts about the whole Iraqi Kuwait thing? I can't tell you that. <laughs> okay, I've, she's obviously sworn to secrecy, she must have a much higher security clearance than all of us. So, you know, uh, when you can talk to us, I hope maybe we can come back and talk to you a little bit more about it after the fact, and you can tell us what you knew all along. Yes. <laughs> Great. Well, thanks a lot. <laughs> Thank you, too. <laughs> well, we're here with the famous Jackie Wilson, not to be confused with the singer Jackie Wilson, but uh, Jackie Wilson, uh, born and raised right here in Covina. How you doing, Jackie? Oh, really good. How are you? Oh, we're, we're, we're hanging in there. Um, Jackie, um, over the last few weeks here on the, on the worldwide uh, look, there, there's there been some trouble in uh, the Middle East. What, what are your thoughts on the whole Iraqi-Kuwait situation? It scares me. <laughs> Oh wait, are you putting this on anything? We're putting it on tape, but just just keep going and talking. Yeah, yeah. Just, just, just ignore the camera. Oh man. What do I think about? It? Yeah, it scares me. I I haven't been keeping that up on it. My parents watch it every morning. I don't know. Well, what do you what do you think uh, America or the United States should do in in this situation? Eat popcorn. <laughs> well, it's confusing because I mean I think that. 
I don't like sending like our people here because I think about their, um, you know, I think about the boys' families here and everything, and that what a pain for us to have to go fight their war. But <laughs> you know, dying over there because of some madman. But then again, it's hard because we almost need it. So I don't. I'm not one way or the other. Midnight Impressions is your one-stop source for all of your custom silk screening needs. We do t-shirts, jackets, hats, ad design, and layout. And we have a complete in-house art department that can bring your idea to life. We offer high-quality silk screening at affordable prices. Call us for a free price quote. Midnight Impressions at area code 818-969-3774. All of us at Quintessential Covina would like to thank McMurphy's at Citrus and Bedillo for their fine foods and hospitality. Go ahead and visit them. It's a family place, and don't forget their Irwindale location. So thanks, Donna and Steve, and we'll be seeing you later. That's McMurphy's for eating and drinking. Good afternoon, Covina. Hey, it's great to be back, isn't it, Red Robin? One more time, yeah. Professor. Thanks to Mr. Getz and Mr. Van Cluck. We're back here in front of the Covina audience, and uh, we'll give them some Reunion of our show. ideas. I'm fired up tonight, Professor. Good. So, uh, what shall we talk about? How about that? Uh, how about that Supreme Court thing? Yeah, I'm glad you brought that up, because I think Mr. Souter is a great pick by a great president. I don't know what else I can say. This nominee has a brilliant legal mind. He's renowned by his colleagues as a great scholar in the law. He has an excellent work ethic and conservative, but not an ideologue. He's just the kind of man we need on the Supreme Court. Control Pardon yourself. Me. You can depend on him to interpret the Constitution correctly. Not one of these liberal judges that come to the bench with their hidden social agendas. Not one of those who seek to subvert our great constitution and the government of this country. By coming to the Supreme Court with a secret agenda, and this secret agenda is to legislate judicially. These liberals are insidious. They can't elect you know, candidates who will promote their bankrupt social agendas and neo-Marxist political and economic programs. So what do they do? They, they've tried to subvert the highest court of the land. I mean, this is treason. It's the duty of the Supreme Court to interpret the Constitution. That is their job. But by trying to st stack this august body with unscrupulous jurists, unscrupulous jurists, excuse me, who promote their narrow interests through judicial legislation, the liberals are trying to subvert our country. But this plot has been exposed, and we have just been fortunate that in the last couple of decades, we've had great Republican presidents, for the most part with one unfortunate you know, exception to that, and they have put a lot of good men on the court, fair-minded men who know what their duty is, and. Uh, Today, some semblance of normalcy has been restored, some balance to our government. Uh, I'm sure you agree with me on this issue. Professor, that's a load of crap. I like have some dignity. I'd like to thank Marty and Dave. You know, I, I seek here, I seek there for an avenue for my views, and the LA Times won't publish me. The, new, the networks won't touch me. So I, I have a, a really feeling of gratitude to the producers of this program to give me an opportunity to bring the light of truth to Kavina. And on the Supreme Court, first of all, I have to thank and bid adieu to Justice Brennan, who was a great Supreme Court justice, who enhanced civil liberties for all Americans, just not a few rich, uh, wealthy Republicans. And 
Justice Brennan will be remembered for so many important Supreme Court decisions. New York Times versus Sullivan, Baker versus Carr, Brown versus Board of Education, Arizona versus Miranda, and the glorious exclusionary rule. And he's going to be followed by this guy, Souter. I mean, what, what did Bush do? Scour the country to find someone that appears to be a bigger he boob than he? scoured the country to find the best man. And anyway, who is this guy, Souter? And what does he do up there in New Hampshire in that, that house all by himself? I mean, did you see him on CNN? The man is brain dead. Give me a break. They scoured his judicial record and could not find a single opinion that this man had. But nevertheless, the, com the confirmation process will go on. And citizens of Covina, I'm going to give you the A, B, and C of Supreme Court buzzwords. Letter A, advice and consent. President Bush says, I advise you senators to consent to my nominee, but the Senate will ask the questions they want, and they will confirm this nominee only if he is qualified. B stands for balance, what the right-wingers have been crying for and bellyaching for so long. Now they've got it. Where are the cries for fairness and balance going to come from now? C is for conservative view. What they say is a principal belief that unelected judges should should thwart democracy by sticking their own political values into the Constitution. Au contraire, what this really means is now the Republicans have, this, have a chance to stack the Supreme Court and subvert the Constitution with a radical conservative views. F is for Fifth Amendment. Let criminals off on technicalities. Very bad, but unless the criminal is Oliver North. Ideology. Very, very bad. Conservatives are against this. Yet, do not think for one moment that Bush didn't scour Souter's ideology to the fine letter. Gonna, we're going to hear this scour. Judicial activism. Sir, I didn't interrupt you. J is for judicial activism, judicial restraint. Activism is bad. Restraint is good, unless the Constitution restrains them from bombing Nicaraguan harbors. What is that? Yet, activism is fine if it limits, if it limits women's rights gay and lesbian rights and the rights of oppressed minorities everywhere. O is for original intent. The big lie as practiced by the right-wing ideologues. They lay claim to single understanding of original intent of the framers' views. How, how quaint. And finally, S is for strict constructionalism, the third component of conservatives' holy trinity, along with judicial restraint and original intent. This means no activism. Yet, if you look at the First Amendment, Congress shall make no law abridging the freedom of speech. Yet, the conservatives are always eager to limit free speech, as, as a, pardon me, as expressed by flag burning and other legitimate forms of protest. And now, they want to fry Roseanne Barr simply because they don't like her version of the Star Spangled Banner. Well, get real, people. Let's just be honest. The right wants it both, way, both ways. They want right-wing extremists on the court, and yet they want the moral high ground of being above politics. Their hypocrisy makes me sick. I think the temperature in the room has uh, been risen by about 10 degrees since you've been spewing this garbage out. I understand you want to talk about the National Endowments for the Arts. And I have some opinions on that myself. I'm sure you do. Well, I see this. Is another example of the goose steppers really out of the woods again, disguised as an attempt to block so-called obscene art. It's just another cynical trick to limit freedom of expression and enforce censorship. The thought police have grabbed onto this issue with all the fervor of a holy crusade. They hoarsely croak about Maplethorpe and Two Live Crew and any other artist that offends their delicate sensibilities. Oh, how they want to save us from ourselves. And what judges of art are they? Helms and Dannemeyer and Rohrenbacher. Their idea of art is limited to Norman Rockwell, but their political views are strictly from George Lincoln Rockwell. These Cretans, they want to turn us all into images of 1950 TV shows, caricatures of a past that never was. The Donna Reed show is not real. This is not Leave it to Beaver or Father Knows Best. Let them criticize 
art all they would like to do. After all, I think this art is just a decadent collection of, bourge of a bourgeois society in its death rows with no socialist themes or consciousness. But hey, I don't want to ban it. And any art that, uh, to me, doesn't serve the collective ideal is offensive. But hey, I don't think we should destroy it. I prefer a rousing version of the Internationale or the songs of, and poetry of Woody Guthrie to Two Life Crew. But hey, I don't try to force my views on old fart heads like Dannemeyer. These closet homophobes are cultural literates, bumpkins and meddlers of the worst kind, and such hypocrites. What is obscene, ladies and gentlemen, is nuclear war, defensive, defense contract boondoggles, poverty, sexism, racism, and injustice. Look, comrades, the only principle these stooges understand is the one connected to their bank books. If they want to regulate something, why not try the savings and loan industry and let their precious marketplace be the sole arbiter of taste? Peace. The most obscene thing I've seen recently is your mind. This is just the kind of degenerate commie drivel I've come to expect from you, Red Robin. Proud of it. But the American public won't be fooled by you or your swill. Some people were born with a silver spoon in their mouth. They haven't any memory of ever having worked an honest day. Workers of the world unite. And you know who I'm, who I'm speaking of. No. But most of us, we have to work hard for our money. We don't begrudge paying Uncle Sam our fair share to run our government for the common defense and even to lend a helping hand to the truly needy. But to take bread out of our mouths, to fund this disgusting filth and perversity that some sick, degraded minds call art, it's more than the honest working man can bear. These so-called artists are destroying the moral fiber and character of our great nation, and let's not forget that by purveying the kind of filth and degeneracy that the minds of normal, decent persons wouldn't even be able to conceive of. Be surprised. And now you want the American taxpayer to foot the bill for the moral destruction of America? You know, forget it, Red Robin. We're not going to stand for it. I'm not going to stand for it. Neither will the people of Covina. You're going to lose this battle, Red Robin, just like your commie Sandinista buddies lost in the, in the first free election held in Nicaragua. You're just on the losing side. All over the world, the winds of freedom and change are blowing. The Marxist, Stalinist regimes, which you love so much, are crumbling under their own weight. You and your ilk are completely morally bankrupt. Your ideology is exposed to the world for the, the degeneracy that it is. I just, you know, wish you goodbye, Robin, and I hope you find some rock to crawl under. Oh, how poetic you are, Professor. But I, have gla I am glad you noticed the change in the world, the change, the change that's been brought about by Chairman Gorbachev. Freedom-loving people. Who I consider the greatest leader of the post-war era, who's don't, ushered in don't this trust him. new age of socialism into the, into the Eastern Bloc countries. And I think it's a, great, it's a grand day and a, and, a, and a wonderful evolution of the of communist ideology into this uh, social democracy that we see now emerging in Central Europe. Thank you, Chairman Gordon. There, there ought not to be a forum, forum for your views. It's disgusting. Well, I've had my say, well, Professor. I hope to see you again, because you an audience. Thank you. Peace. Help me through. Help me.
And we're back with the reunion edition of Quintessential Covina. Now here's Dave and Marty and their special guest, Mayor Chris Lancaster. All right. All Good right. job, Rob. Thank you, Rob. Thank you, Ben. Thank you, Ben. Dog. The Blind Dog Band. Woo! There they are. We'll get, a, right. we'll get a number out of them, yeah. Oh, boy. Later on in our program. Um, Fantastic uh, political report from the Freeman Weiner Group. Uh, what, did they talk, what did they talk about? <laughs> I was hoping you could tell me. I, was, uh, I, I heard it was I a heard, break. Uh, I had to go to the restroom. I heard two live crew in there somewhere. Yeah. I also heard something about the arts. <laughs> the NEA, I'm Something sure. about the Supreme Court, yeah. the NEA. Yeah, political stuff. Oh, yeah. Okay. Good stuff. Good stuff, yeah. Good oh, stuff. we have a phone call. We have a phone call. Should we take that Do we have any more faxes? So we called in for the fax number. They, let's put the fax number First back. First of all, let me ask, how do you know when there's a phone call? I mean, uh, someone one of our uh, floor people like uh, go like oh, this. Go like that. It's, you know, it could either mean uh, Shaka. Shaka or something. Hello, caller. Hello. Who's this? This is Rachel. Hi, Rachel. What's going on in your life? I just wanted to comment on the Freeman Weiner report. Uh huh. Um, I think R Mr. Freeman is a, is a commie pig. Do you think? Oh. <laughs> wow. And what do you base uh, that opinion on? Hey, Rachel, I appreciate if you just say what's on your mind. Yeah. yeah. Don't, no, don't, 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 my dad. Okay. Don't, don't hold anything back. What was that? The wine is my father, so that's why. Oh, okay. <laughs> so your dad must be Mr. Weiner, the man on the right there. Mm-hmm. Okay. <laughs> and the man on the left is, of course, a commie pig. We got it straight from Rachel. So well, what, why, why is he wearing the arm and sickle on his chest? Because he's a commie my pig. My mother wants a t-shirt. Oh. What? Uh -huh. Your mom wants a T-shirt? Mm-hmm. Okay. Oh. Um, okay. Well, write the name write down. That down. Rachel, well, we can send it home. We can send that one home. Do we have anybody Send else? it home with Larry. Yeah, okay. Do that. So how are you tonight? How are you tonight? How are you tonight? I'm fine. That's cool. You're up rather late. What are these for? Oh, yeah. My yeah. mom let me stay up since. All right. My dad oh, Dad. Me. Yeah, Dad was on. Um, but, oh, I have a message. Hello. Well, Margaret, Steve, and Caitlin. And Margaret, thank you for putting up with me. Seriously. Oh, She's my brother wants to lot. talk. Okay. Hi. Hi. How are you? Fine. Well, so what did you think of uh, what just happened? How old are these kids? Aren't they up a little? I have to agree with Uncle Robin. You agree with Uncle Robin, the commie pig? I got the phone back. All right. Oh, okay. So okay. She beat her brother up and got the phone back. Well, thanks for calling. Thank you. Bye. Bye, Rachel. Nice Bye, meeting Rachel. you. Bye, Mr. Munchkin. <laughs> okay. Always nice to hear from all ages of our Absolutely. audience. Gee, they're up a little late, aren't they? It is. It's a uh, big 10.30. It's for a good cause. 10.30. So. It's I quite a show. It's quite a show. The stone throwing scene. It's quite a show. The stone throwing scene. Yeah. That didn't happen after the cartoon. I don't yeah, know. no. That's too bad. Um, Did you see the cartoon? No. Oh, you missed that it. Was, that was a good one. Oh, yeah. That was a funny one. There's a commie pig. I wish one of you brought it up. <laughs> <laughs> the cat comes in. We got some new toys here at the Cavina studio. And, uh, <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Uh, uh, yes, sir. So Ensenada, last week, 
or a week ago approximately at that point. Uh, tell us a little bit about what happened and what your involvement was. Well, my involvement was this, is that I received an invitation from the president of the Rotary Club, uh, Bob Remy. Uh, someone's coming in through the door. Probably a fax. fax? That's, a, that's a quite a fax machine we have there, huh? Yeah. Well, yeah. oh. <laughs> people saying a novel? <laughs> oh <my laughs> I know. God. From prison. That could be personal, so, you know, yeah. whoever it's addressed to. It's not, uh, you know, passing around. Well, anyway. Opinions and yawns you know, expressed you know? uh, on this program. <laughs> well, anyway, we went. Uh, I went down as a guest of Rotary down to the um, Ensenada event, which was truly successful uh, from the standpoint that they had 30 uh, dental students from UCLA and USC come down and perform uh, free dental work on 165 children. And uh, I had the opportunity to be a dental assistant for uh, two days and we worked on a lot of kids and uh, it was just a wonderful experience and then I had the opportunity to go to a uh, orphanage and uh, fell in love with just a little tiny little girl her, her name was Margarita and she was one years old and uh, wow. loved to have brought there's, her home with us. There were some scenes we were just looking at from there. Um, but it was uh, it's, it's truly a worthwhile program I commend the Rotary for doing it because they performed uh, fifty thousand dollars worth of dental work and it only cost them about fifteen thousand dollars because they have to pay for the room board of the dental students and some of the dentists who go down and supervise and some mm -hmm. of the hygienists and and those type costs but it was uh... gee it was just uh... just wonderful here we go uh, some more footage here of, of the kind of stuff that goes on down yeah there. i can they hear us as we talk on yeah, this absolutely they uh... most of these kids um, have s some serious cavities. One child that we worked on had 13 cavities Ouch. in his mouth. But something that a unique problem they do have down there is they put so much fluoridation or fluoride in the water that it discolors their teeth mm. and uh, they seem to miss... Too uh, much of a good thing. Too much of a good thing and uh, I saw that most of the children not only had uh, severe tooth decay as well but they they needed a lot of uh, orthodontist uh, work as well. I just got a new bridge. Did you? Yeah. Those aren't real? Four frontier. Hey, it looked great. Thanks. It's great. Cost enough. Yeah. Well. <laughs> How much did that cost you? Put you back. Well, insurance. I don't insurance. Know. Cost insurance. Cost a lot of money. Yeah. Cost some premiums. But uh, I got to show. We were driving down. Uh, <laughs> we. Uh, it was very, very depressing to see some of the shacks that are living. You know, people live yeah. on those uh, cardboard shacks. But then we saw this one cardboard shack that had a satellite dish. Oh, jeez. You're kidding. <laughs> so it was uh, well, uh, misplaced priorities. Well, I don't know. I, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Well, I've, I've heard, like, uh, my wife has said she's, she'd been down there before, and uh, you, you go through villages like that, and then you'll see a church, and it's just these amazing For churches. Yeah. But uh, There's nothing against religion, but, you yeah. know. But, you know, some of you know, strange. you think where these kids, you know, they live in shacks and everything, when they came in for their dental work, I mean, their hygiene was, was great. I mean, they, they didn't smell. They had clean ears. Their hair was clean. They were neatly dressed. I was, I was very taken uh, by that because I seen the living conditions in which they lived. They were very, very clean mm -hmm. people, and I was, quite, I was quite impressed. That's great. Well, we have a call. Let's go to the call real quick. Hi. Who's Hello. there? Hi, this is Phil. Hi, Phil. Hi, Phil. Hello, Phil. Hey, um, I got a question for the mayor. <laughs> yes, sir. Oh, perfect. Yeah. He's here. <laughs> Number one, I'd like to know why he's not wearing any socks. What's he going to do about that hairdo? Why does his belly hang, and why doesn't he have a yoke? <laughs> <laughs> I'd, like, I'd like to know because, this, I mean, really representing the city of Covina, I think that he ought to be, you know, in some kind of decent shape. And, uh, he's on QC, sir. So is, 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 uh, is this Pat Hawkins? This is the hop to you. <laughs> uh, How for, you doing, Goo? Well, for our viewers out there, Pat Hopkins and I work out together. Aha. Uh -huh. uh -huh. Pat is the only guy that I know that has four double chins. <laughs> really? <laughs> that's eight? That's eight altogether, right? <laughs> I just want to commend you, Chris. Even for a Democrat, you're doing a fine job. And what a Democrat, we're calling him. What's <laughs> oh, <laughs> No, he's a great guy, and uh, I vote for him anyway, anytime. Pat, it's good. Pat, what, 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 you don't have a date tonight? What are you doing home? No, I'm just uh, kind of hanging out. I knew that you were going to be on tonight, so I canceled my plans. I was supposed to go see Phantom of the Opera, but <laughs> I decided Chris Lancaster on TV. I mean, you know, you know, I got a couple of pizzas going here and stuff. And I figured whatever I don't need, I can drop over. To well, you know, I'm going to be off the. I'm going to be off here in about 15 minutes. I'll come over. Okay, that sounds good. But I only got two pizzas. <laughs> oh, 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 boy. Uh, well, Chris, I want to tell you it'd be nice talking to you. You know, but hey, uh, good talking to you, pal. I'll see you at the gym on. Uh, 
Monday. Okay, was that Monday of 92 or? Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, Chris a... is a great guy. All kidding aside, he's, he's hey, all right. Listen, Pat, next time get a haircut, will you? Okay, uh, send a check in the mail, will you, kid? <laughs> yeah. Ooh. See you later. <laughs> okay. Hey, message for the control room. It's about time for another break. Is it really? Yeah. We've got to get them all in. Well, we're not going to wait. People I'm not going to waste them. Mm. That's true. This is our last kid. Get a break. Pretty good. Yeah. Uh, well, there's a couple things we need to bring up as well. Now, um, we got a fax in. I want to wait a couple minutes because somebody sent us a fax from their office. He had called earlier. Um, so we'll get to this in just a second. Um, but uh, I understand that, that uh, you had a, a companion uh, or somebody had gone down there with you to uh, Mexico. Yes. And somebody that, that is near and dear to our heart. And, and maybe you could shed a little light on what happened and what's going to happen with that. I know that some, some video was shot and hopefully going to make... Uh, something so that everybody knows uh, what happens down in Mexico every year with these uh, dental students. Well, you're talking about the, your crew S that went down? Steve, well, not my crew anymore. Well, let me tell you, Steve, uh, Steve and Skip did a, did a spectacular job from the standpoint that they're very, very helpful and with the kids. Uh, Skip, who knows the language, was able to interpret. Uh, I mean, we had to we'd shoot these kids up with Novocaine or anesthesia and so forth. And, and uh, you know you can't. There's a language barrier here, and, yeah. and so we had to find out if it has if it was working. I just can't start drilling on these kids if the if the tooth's not dead. And Skip would come over and talk to them in their language and ask them, you know, is the, is the gum or the lip numb or whatever and so forth. And he'd help. Hey, calm be quiet the, outside. He would help calm the kids down. But Thank we you. got Steve involved because uh, you know he was looking like he needed something to do. So we put him down, Isn't that gave thing? him a mask and some gloves, and he. Uh, Hi, I'm not a doctor, but I dress like one. Yeah, yeah. yeah that, that, well, that's the way it was with all of us, and uh, he did a did a super job in assisting one of the uh, dental students there, and it's 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 a unique experience, and I'm sure Steve appreciated it, and he did very good at it too. Yeah, excellent. Really. Now, uh, the new city hall. Let's go touch on that real quickly. Um, yes. Uh, that had been was arisen amidst quite a bit of controversy. There uh, was some controversy. Behind now that. it's 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 over and done with. It's built, and it's. Uh, it's like the Cold War's really history now. Yeah. Is. Uh, how, how is the new city hall? Is it going to be oh, going to serve the needs for the city? Well, it's, it's a beautiful facility. Uh, there's no doubt about it. We paid around $4 million for it. And uh, people who work there um, uh, enjoy it. Uh, there are some problems with it, but you probably have problems with any building that you build. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, it seems to be working well. The council chambers seem to be adequate. And people who attend our meetings like them, uh, like the facility. So we're, uh, we're basically pleased with it. Um, like you said, it was a controversial issue, but that's history now. We got a building, and we're going to make the best of it, and uh, that's where we are. Yeah. Um, how are things uh, changing in the city? Uh, let me uh, talk very frankly. I know that the the council has taken a major swing. Um, it, it was it, let's let's say the council was one way for many years when Larry Strait was mayor. Mm -hmm. uh, Bob Lowe took over as mayor, and the the majority took a big uh, turn, and now it seems to be back the other way. Is that is that the case? Well, thanks. I mean, you know, it's, com yeah, it's more I know. complicated than that. But <coughs> it's it's much more complicated than that. But yeah, there, there probably is a philosophical change uh, on the council now. Uh, but uh, my purpose as mayor, I'm trying to get rid of this 3-2 appearance that the community <coughs> has had relative to their city council over the past decade. And uh, we think, I think now that we've got a very, very cohesive council, uh, I think we're very, very like-minded, uh, although we're certainly not without controversy, but we're very much like-minded to the standpoint that, yes, we all want what's best for the community. And uh, one thing that I, I saw in past councils is that when a councilman disagreed with another, there seemed to be a personality conflict, and you don't see that with this council. Uh, sure, we disagree on issues, but not because I don't like you. It's because mm -hmm. I don't agree with you on the issue. Mm -hmm. And I think that's probably the big change uh, that's on this council this uh, under my tenure. Well, that's good. Hopefully that will, you know, I think that's, that's good and sound for the community. Okay, this is a fax that had come in from Greg Lee. Um, he asked me to hand this to you. And it says, ask the mayor if he knows the cover to this magazine. He <laughs> showed it's almost mandatory reading for, every, for a conservative. Um, <laughs> it says, please have the mayor tell us what his political ambitions are for the future. Sorry, but I didn't hear them earlier when he spoke. Um, uh, you, you mentioned them to us. Yeah, I did. I, just, I just mentioned I plan on making a career in public service. Uh, I'm in no uh, big hurry to get in further elected office. I want to make some money. I've started my own company. I'm a government and political consultant and uh, enjoy the income I'm making now. And um, my wife and I are in the process of buying our first home in Covina. 
Mm -hmm. You know, and let me tell you, it's a little difficult. Congratulations. Yeah, it's a little difficult from the standpoint. I, I got one, though, you might be interested in. You, Seriously. You bought one in the city? I got one. He bought one like, several years ago. He's going to be Yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, we, we uh, sell it, I'm going to call over and take a look at it after the show. Sure. sure. It has to be in the city, though. It's uh, in Covina. Okay. Because the county, yeah. Yeah, that's, and that's very well, don't frustrating. Don't move yourself out of a job, right? It's got a pool. Got a pool? Yeah. Gee, hey, you're high on the hog. Yeah, I yeah. am. Wow. It's styling right there. But anyway, I, when the, those I'm, things, I'm type of things hard. happen, we don't know. But uh, <laughs> I plan on making a career in public service, and where that's going to take me, I don't know at this point. Have you found it uh, satisfying so far? Oh, yeah. See, there's one thing that, that's so exciting about politics is that it's always changing, never gets boring. And the players are always changing. Which oh, keeps well, it, yeah. I mean, it look, it's funny. I was thinking tonight what's happened since QC has gone off the air. Uh, uh, an amazing amount of things. I mean, uh, the Cold War has ended in the last year, really. Uh, it really come to an end. And uh, the Berlin Wall has come down. West, yeah, uh, East Europe has really taken a major time. Yeah, turn. Uh, for the first time since the They put a plaque up on Hollenbeck and, uh, and San Bernardino. <laughs> yeah, make it a uh, historical uh, site. J.S. Phillips. Oh, really? I guess but, we got uh, one I mean, minute left. For the first time we've yeah. stood uh, um, together on an issue or against an aggressor, which we are doing right now with Iraq, with the Soviet Union. And uh, so we're amidst tremendous change. I think it'll always be changing. Uh, so you're right, everybody said very exciting. We're living <laughs> a very, very exciting time. <laughs> Is Ron uh, <laughs> Capitoso here? Why don't yeah. you bring Ron in and he and I'll chit chat and uh, talk about some issues, huh? <laughs> so he just passed his card in here? Yeah. <laughs> That's Ron. That's our buddy Ron Capitosto. Here he is. He's Century 21, the Lytle Company. The Lytle Company. He sent a fax in earlier. Okay, I got you first. Store. There we go. There's Ron. Yeah. There okay. Ron Capitosto. Okay, while we contemplate Ron's card, uh, we're going to go to a break. And uh, we'll be back. You know these lights are hot? They are very hot. Very hot. Very That's hot. one of the reasons for a break. <laughs> so, <laughs> Sean Murphy, if you're out there, watch this. Here you come. Yeah, here we'll See you in a minute. Seriously. I want to sell our house. How, how old is it? 50, 1957. Bob Page, who is the uh, captain, uh, one of the captains for the Monrovia City Police Department, and, and tell us a little bit about what you're doing out down here today, Bob. Okay, this is our annual picnic. Every year in August, we hold an annual picnic for all the city employees in, in the city of Monrovia, but because of the fact that we uh, don't have uh, an opportunity to, to get all of our employees away from the city to be able to come to the picnic, we hold it outside of town so they, can, they don't have to work it as well. That's why we're here in Covina. Yeah, because I was wondering, I mean, I, I used to live in Monrovia, and Monrovia's got a lot of nice parks, and it was kind of strange that you would come out of town to uh, have your own uh, picnic. If we didn't, though, all of the employees that are working today would have to continue to work uh, at the Parks and Recreation Department. This way, we'd let them off, let them come to another city and enjoy uh, the picnic and not have to work it. They can't have alcohol in their park, and we can. That's why we're the better. So that's the true reason. The, the police chief said that they just wanted to be able to get everybody off of work so they could come away. Yeah, they're having the clean and sober thing over there, and then the drunken parade over here. So it's just kind of a little dark and light thing here. Midnight Impressions is your one-stop source for all of your custom silk screening needs. We do t-shirts, jackets, hats, ad design, and layout. And we have a complete in-house art department that can bring your idea to life. We offer high-quality silk screening at affordable prices. Call us for a free price quote. Midnight Impressions at area code 818-969-3774. All of us at Quintessential Covina would like to thank McMurphy's at Citrus and Bedillo for their fine foods and hospitality. Go ahead and visit them. It's a family place, and don't forget their Irwindale location. So thanks, Don and Steve, and we'll be seeing you later. That's McMurphy's for eating and drinking. Right, we're here.
there. Hey, Blind Dog Band. Let's have a hand for the Blind Dog yes. Band, everybody. Everybody out there in the studio. Yes. All right. Yeah. All right. I missed that. Jam session. <laughs> in Covina. In Covina. Yeah. Well, welcome to Jeff's. Note. Welcome. I'm Jeff Plummer. And I'm Wayne Sakamoto. And it's been a year, and we've. A lot of yes, things have welcome happened. Back. How, how have you been, Wayne? I haven't seen you in a while. Well, I've been busy with uh, this program that uh, actually you've been helping out with called Sandscreen, which actually kind of launched off because of Jeff's note. Thanks to Dave and Marty. They That's right. Kind of sp and hey, thanks, Dave. Another Marty. person has a spinoff show of QC who's operating camera here, That's Kelly right. Muller. Kelly Muller. You want to get a shot, get a shot of, of Kelly? Kelly Let's get a shot of Kelly here. we got to plug her because she's got a great show. She has put together uh, an amazing 35 shows. Is that right, Kelly? 35 shows? All right. Oh, well. well, next week is their 35th show, and we've put together about 20 shows so far. And Barry J. Ward directs that show, I think. <laughs> Anyways, uh, so what's going on? What do we got? What well, we got there's a tonight? lot of great things going on in the music world. A lot of great things. Yeah. We got a lot of like videos. us, of course. We've kind of moved up. Right. And we got a lot to tell you. <laughs> um, we're gonna give. We've got a, actually a giveaway tonight. It looks like a box of Kleenex, but it's actually Aztec Camera's new single, the the crying scene. And so if we can get a caller in uh, who can tell us, because we have a video by Devo tonight. So if, who, if anybody can call in and tell us a Devo song, just the name of the Devo song, uh, we'll have a prize for you. Yeah, call in right now. That so number again? Come on, let's flash that up. Can we number. flash the number real quick? Right here, please. I guess we're not going to 967-SELF, right? 967-7353. That's right. So our first two videos tonight. Well, uh, first off is uh, the new, uh, thank you, there it is. It's a new video by Devo, and they're back uh, on a roll again. And in fact, it was shot uh, here locally in the city of industry, and uh, the other scenes were in Palm Springs. Palm Springs, and uh, this is an ori original version. It's not even the one that's shown on MTV. Oh, this is the unedited, uh, unedited, unedited version. There's a little yes. something unedited. We have a call. You want to take a call right now? Sure. Sure. Caller? Do you have an answer? Hello? No, I guess we don't have a call. We I'll tell you what. Why don't we go ahead and uh, start off with our first couple of videos here as we enjoy so our here's massages here. So here's Devo Post, post <laughs> Modern Man yes. and Aztec Camera, The Crying mm. Scene, which you could win if you call in. So uh, watch these videos and we, we'll be right back. Or change that page. <laughs> Thank you. Yay. Oh, my turn. Oh, Victoria Williams. Wonderful. Bogarts in Long Beach. Gotta go see her. And finishing oh. out the week, Michelle. All right. On Friday, um, August 23rd, we have Ziggy Marley at the Universal Amphitheater. All right. I like that name. Ziggy. So that's, that's a, the final QC concert calendar. Right yes, there. the final. I hate saying that word. Final. It sounds like that sounds so awful. Maybe we'll get Marty to do another one. I don't yeah. know. Maybe next year. It was hard enough getting once this on there. I don't know. Once a year, once a year, we can do it. Well, we better throw it to our next video because we're getting all these cues to, to rush. So yeah. we have a band with a strange title uh, called this is Swamp your, Zombies. Yeah, this is your pick. And this is from Doctor Dream Records. They're just a little record company who likes to push unusual bands. Right, but and their, uh, their video is quite interesting. A it's lot quite of interesting. It has a lot of uh, funny little scenes in it. The song is called Creeps. And when you see the video, you'll know why. Maybe, maybe they'll be talking about you, you creep. Just vacation pictures. Uh, and when we come back, we're going to say goodbye and throw it back to Dave and Marty. And we might even show you a couple of uh, Las Vegas. Vegas. Yeah. All right, that was Hey, the Creeps. Creeps. Yes. Well, Wayne, it was a good year. Yes, it was great. And I'd like to thank you for letting us back on your airwaves here in Covina. And yeah. we're going to return it back to Dave and Marty and let them Say a tearful farewell. Tearful. It's been great. Sob, thanks, sob. Thanks, Michelle. Thanks, Michelle. Hey, thanks, Michelle. Oh, thanks, Jim. Of course, Jim. Yes. Thanks. Michelle. Michelle, yes. And thanks to the Blind Dog Band once again. And thanks to all our winners, too, out there. So stay tuned for Dave and Marty. They'll be right back. Let's After take it to the Blind Dog Band. Yeah. Blind Dog Band, right Blind here. Blind Dog Band. Let's have a hand. Yeah. <laughs>
Okay, here's your cheating heart by the harmonic chords. Midnight Impressions is your one-stop source for all of your custom silk screening needs. We do t-shirts, jackets, hats, ad design, and layout. And we have a complete in-house art department that can bring your idea to life. We offer high-quality silk screening at affordable prices. Call us for a free price quote. Midnight Impressions at area code 818-969-3774. All of us at Quintessential Covina would like to thank McMurphy's at Citrus and Badillo for their fine foods and hospitality. Go ahead and visit them. It's a family place, and don't forget their Irwindale location. So thanks, Don and Steve, and we'll be seeing you later. That's McMurphy's for eating and drinking. Marty, Dave, we've kind of come Rob? towards the end. Rob's, Rob's nice to have us. you That's once it. again back on the up here with us. Um, yeah, it's been an eventful evening, I also, should say. It, it has been. I want to see. The, I want to see that cartoon again. It's actually <laughs> been. A, it's been a year. It's been a year. It's been a year since we uh, got got out of here, and uh, it sure feels like it. A lot has happened, and uh, we have a few minutes left. If anybody wants to call and uh, comment or. Faxes. Or express uh, uh, an opinion on something. If anybody has any idea where Miss yeah, Covina is tonight, wanna, yeah, please If anybody us knows where Don Fletcher is, please give us a call. And there's still time to fax in for a, for a T-shirt. I'm going to grab that. It's, it's, it's almost off the wall anyway. Now watch out for that tag. That tag. There's tax in it. Ooh. <clears throat> it's a tax season again. But if you fax in, you can oh, get one of these Dave. limited edition quintessential Covina T-shirts here. And let's look at the front. No axe to grind, just a point QC. to make. Went to Central Covina. What's the colors reversed? Very nice. It's supposed to be this Wonderful one. shirt. What do you want? Yeah, it looks nice. It's, it's cool. a little bit different. A beautiful it's shirt. Sense. And we want to thank McMurphy's for uh, feeding our crew. Uh, In a wonderful Steve way. and Donna, they're, they're really good people. And uh, over at Midnight Impressions, thanks for those shirts. These shirts. These are great. They're beautiful. 100% cotton, Hanes, inspected Hanes. by number 12. Top quality. Top, nice top quality garments. I got a cousin in the business. I can get you a discount. Yeah. So, uh, 
Well, well it's been great. I mean, we had uh, everybody back tonight. Margaret Wolf uh, was back with us in, on tape. Margaret Wolf. Not in person. Are you watching Margaret? Does she have? She has cable. Yeah. Margaret, where are you? You didn't show. Maybe she had a date tonight. I'm sure she's not watching. She's probably not watching. Yeah. She just After the dropped, news was over. Dropped off her tape and took off. Whew. See you. We would have liked to have seen you, Margaret. Um, because we're going to be playing Trivial Pursuit later, and where are you? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> party at Marty's house after the yeah, show. Yeah, party at my house. I'm just, so, uh, and uh, Amir didn't want to buy it. I don't know. That's right. Yeah, so did Ron. I think Ron's got the inside track right now. Mm. So, okay. uh, Rob. Yeah, Marty. Uh, what, are you, what have you been doing the last year? Well, I've been uh, working at a university and uh, running a TV station out in Laverne. Hmm. So cool. I've been keeping busy. Right, you got applause there. Thank you. Thank well, you. Why, why don't we let's do? Can we, you mind if I do a quick update? As cool. From what I know, people. Cool. Uh, Marty Getz, you are still a resident of Covina. You are, have done a little bit of traveling in the last year. Uh, your kids are growing up. I saw them this morning. Um, Jeff Plummer is uh, Thank you. is a Thank production you. coordinator down at Continental Cablevision in Downey, and has made a great, uh, makes making great strides in the television business. And you just pulled. The eraser out of that, my pen. Thank you very much. <laughs> okay. <coughs> Wayne Sakamoto is uh, still with uh, the, the same company he's been he's with for a little still while. Obnoxious. He's still uh, obnoxious. Yeah, he's still obnoxious and he's selling uh, ad space for a magazine and doing very well. Travel, he's been traveling a lot too. Um, Rob Van Reel, of course, is working at University of Laverne, right? That's right. And uh, Steve Rhodes is still here. Um, Mag? What's that? Mag. Margaret Waltz? Margaret Waltz? Waltz? <laughs> Waltz? 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 I'm not sure exactly Another what she's facts. doing, but she's doing much. She's doing a lot of good news, and uh, someone's at the door. And uh, it's probably Don by now. Don Fletcher here? Oh, it's, it's Wayne. See, it's obnoxious. Oh boy, everybody's gonna come in. And oh, this is great. Let's uh, let's let's get, come. Everybody else, get in. Ready here, Fred. We need to talk to the band. Um. Um, Michelle Miller is uh, still working at uh, Millie's Country Kitchen and no, doing makeup. Own she owns it now. <laughs> um, the, 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 the best darn cinnamon rolls you ever ate. Jeez. Jim Patrick actually made his uh, intern debut here at, at Continental back on, a, on the Dick Dale show, the second, Q, second or third QC ever, and his third. commercial Try producer down at CENCOM. Two. Yeah, that's the third show. Day. Yeah, exactly. And I think oh, people yeah. at the window, we got to talk to the phone force, everybody who's outside, and of course, <laughs> helps to make this show possible. There they are, there's for Linda. Don't we need to get a shot of this corner there. How do we get it? <laughs> everybody needs to. Sean, we need to move back just a little bit. Let's get a shot out the window there and see everybody who helps out. Uh, well, maybe not. They just walked away. You guys are blowing it. You can use your big chance. There's her Linda. Her Linda Blair. There we go. All right, her Linda. All right, you get those phones, on those phones. Anyway, and, uh, anyway, hey, it's time for the blind doggers. All right. Yeah. What are you guys up to? Blind doggers. Uh, we just got through with our second world tour of the year. Yeah? A second world? Yeah, second world. <laughs> you through with this one? Yeah. yeah. We just toured our second world this year. Cool. Uh, getting ready for a benefit show we're doing, Save the Gerbils. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> Richard Gere's not there. <laughs> Karma Good cause. All right, we can all use a little bit. My karma broke down last week. Yeah, my my dog, my right over your karma. Sorry. Oh boy, how's my aura? Aura, dogma, karma, something. All ends in uh. Aura and uh. Aura. And uh, well, the blind dogs are doing good. Cues. What's that? I said you're lacking in blue cues. Where am I? Your aura. Oh, okay, good. Yeah, it's your Curlian thing. Um, Mo and Larry. And to, let's, let's continue on here. Um, of course, Kelly Muller is uh, going gangbusters with Kelly's Corner, and it's and it's everyone. It's uh, and on Barry the show. Ward directs it. Barry Ward, of course, directs that. Um, thank you, Barry. But that's of little consequence. Um, back in, uh, Jake Pritchard is with us. We're not sure. He looks like he's probably committed a few robberies in the last... No, just, <laughs> that's just a joke. Um, uh, Skip Bellier is doing a gangbusters job here as a program director at the Kavina office. Kind of okay, listen. Some, for some pretty big shoes. 
Look at those things. Andrew has just turned down a job to be the sales supervisor at uh, the Montclair Sears. I know. Sears. about that, and I'm not quite um, sure why. And of course, uh, <laughs> Barry is uh, He's uh, working at right STM. Oh yeah, Barry. I think. He doesn't know it yet, but uh, Monday he'll insurance. be employed. Yeah, insurance. Insurance. Uh, he's working at uh, Shop Television or J.C. Penney Shopping Channel as an associate director there. Another thing I'm not real sure why he's bringing about. <laughs> yeah. And he's still wearing black. Yeah, I know. Always on. He's got way. a new VCR, which he he taped Twin Peaks tonight. Mm -hmm. That's good. <laughs> What's going on? There's lots of whispering and pointing. Oh, we're, we're minus the plug. Oh, we got to get uh, plugged in here so that oh, we can do the proper yeah. plug. Is that Wayne? Heck, that Wayne, oh. Yeah. Oh. MTV Unplugged. How's it going? There we go. All right. Okay. Well, I think it's time for us to say goodbye. Yeah. It's been a wonderful, it's been great being back, obviously. It's wonderful to be back here in Cabina. We'd like to thank Chris Lancaster for being on, Xavier Hermosillo for being on, We'd like to thank Don, Don Fletcher, Fletcher for showing up. Right. I was hoping to see you, Don. Thank, thank you for that picture. <laughs> I blinked. Wait, one more. I, I think I blinked. Um, <laughs> yes, I would. I would like to thank everybody. I'd like to. I'd like to thank Skip for putting up with. All right, Skip. Whatever. Big round of applause for Skip Kelly. Tom Nelson. You got to thank Tom Nelson. And uh, Tom Nelson, if you're out there, uh, you got a shirt coming. Uh, thank you for the wonderful article in the Tribune today. Yeah, that it was, was a really good right? job. And uh, thank you, everybody in here, everybody out in the next room, everybody on the other side of that lens. Thanks a lot for watching. Uh, you never know what's going to happen, but we probably won't see you. So thanks a lot, and see you later. It's the Blind Dog Band, everybody. Bye. Take it easy. Oh, wait till he sees the.